<clears throat> um, we predicted our All Star team yesterday, and lo and behold, they picked the starters last night. We knew who the starters were going to be, but we thought we did. Um, but as of right now, LeBron and Giannis are captains. Does anybody have any discrepancies about that? Captains for what? I thought there was no draft. It's not a draft. It's, it's still, it, it's not a draft. It's just captains of the team. That's all. We're not drafting. It's still uh, East and West. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, it's just captain of the team. That's all. It's, it's uh, always been like that. So that's that, That's not an issue. But Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. Um, I guess. Yeah. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. No problem. I was surprised Dame started. I, I, I wasn't, to be honest with you, I wasn't sure. And I'm not, this 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 might be going out on a limb, but to look at the guards in the East, Brunson, Maxi, Halliburton, Donovan Mitchell, Jalen Brunson, I wasn't a hundred percent sure Dame was. I mean, in terms of making the All Star team, I mean, it, it's a lot of guys that have a legit that have a legit argument for making the All Star team as opposed to starting. I was I was surprised when I saw that he ended up starting in the All Star game. But as far as I mean, I, I heard some people saying that. Uh, Kawhi Leonard should have started over James. Well, the face of the league who got the most votes out of everybody who's averaging 25 a game is starting in the All-Star game. I don't care where you're at. And the fact they play for the Lakers, that just compounds it. Yeah, he was going to start. Yes. I find it funny that he was second in the media, voting, which is, I mean, I, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. Jokic was first in the player and media vote, but LeBron okay. was first in the fan vote. But you think the media wouldn't have, I'm not going to call it bias, but I think it's fair to say LeBron hasn't been the second best front court player in the West. Call it bias. That's what it is, Mars. Call yes, it bias. But I just, I just yeah, find yeah. that very, I just find that very interesting that he was second in the media vote. Yeah. But what do he I has think? not been the second. I have a disagreement player. with you. Chill. Why did you say you were surprised about Dame starting? Because I thought that there was guys that they was playing better. And well, name one. I. How about Jalen Brunson? Okay, time out. Well, how about Donovan Jaylen Mitchell? How about the stars of Carrier? You guys told me that y'all agree with Becky Hammond, right? Okay, so mm. this is I do agree. Same, I, I do agree with Becky Hammond. No, 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 no. I'm saying no, 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 no. I didn't ask you. I asked Chilltown. Keep going. Um, so, Keep... See, that's that's what y'all like to do. You like to gang up. No, 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 no. Let's 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 stick to the No, let's let's stick to the subject. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. So so Chilltown. So based off what we saw last night from Jalen Brunson and the Knicks. Right now, the way he hung one on the defending champs, you know what I'm saying? How are we feeling about Jalen Brunson? Because I, I agree with you, Chilltown. That's why I was asking you what you said. Because, see, I agree. I think Jalen Brunson should be starting. Because I think Jalen Brunson is a, is turned into a superstar in front of our very eyes, especially right. if he delivered the goods in the playoffs. Right. I believe Jalen Brunson has proven all the haters wrong. I Go ahead. No, keep going. Keep going. I'm with you. Keep going. Keep going. I'm thinking. No, okay, I'm so saying, I believe so, in Jalen. So, I believe Jalen Brunson is proven. I believe so, Jalen Brunson is proven that he can be the number one guy on a championship level team. Mm -hmm. When you smoke the champs like that, bro, I'm sorry, man. And then the way they've been playing this season, right. and the fact that they play defense, bro, right. and he's the guy that's showing you in the playoffs he can go get it. He can put up 27, 28 a game in the playoffs. He's yep. shown you that before, Chilltown. The reason yep. why they lost was because of Julius Randle. I mean, bro, at the end of the day, J J J Jalen Brunson, Chilltown, if he takes his team and they go to the NBA Finals, if they get past the Celtics or the Bucks of those guys, because what I saw from Miami, that trade was a nightmare. That trade was a nightmare from Miami. That trade was a complete nightmare. So from what I've seen, if that's the case, bro, man, I don't want to hear nothing else from nobody else. Because now, now, uh, the, the, trade yeah. for, the trade that they made right now has backfired on the Miami. Well, it's only been two. It's, the, it's only been two, it's only Bucks, been two games. I think it's the point. How is it backfired? You gotta it's let time talk. No, what are we talking about? No, but I'm saying I don't like I don't like anything I see from Miami right now with that. I don't like anything I see. Then well, James Harden was getting James Harden like and the Clippers were getting, getting cooked for a whole fight. week, two weeks, but then the they were the right. right. They was getting smacked. Yeah, fellas, right, right, fellas, right quick. I'm gonna read. I'm gonna read this super chat. The Knicks and the Knicks and the Celtics a dog fight, but when you look at Jalen Brunson, I think Jalen Brunson is your case. Look how he's balling, bro. You can't take it away from. I'm not gonna fight that today. Bro, I, 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 right quick, chill. I'll, 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 go ahead. I'm sorry, Ron. Butter, butter, and then you you got the floor, chill. Butter mm -hmm. biscuit said, "Y'all NBA fans are dirty. You know Jalen Brunson deserves that over lame time, and especially Halley." Hmm. 
Also, Mars, I heard what you said about us not beating good teams. We just beat the champs <laughs> last night, and that's the next. By the way, yeah, nine, right. nine, and, nine and seventeen against good teams now. Nine and seventeen, right? Eight games yeah. under five hundred yeah. against yeah. against good teams. But to to ticket to, to answer your question, ticket, I actually had Donovan Mitchell starting in the All Star game. That 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 was my pick. I had I had him starting in the All Star game. But I mean, the fact that Jalen Brunson is playing the way he playing, Tyrese Maxey, twenty six and eight. He's been awesome also. So there have been, been a bunch of different guards in the East that have been awesome. And don't get me wrong, Dame is 25 a game playing on the second best team in the East. But the other guards, and it's a fan vote too. And not, not, not just a fan vote, but a media vote. And it's about the fans. That's what the all-star game is. I don't think it's I don't think it's a lot because Tyrese Halliburton hasn't been in the playoffs and, and shown that he can go deep into the playoffs, but he's starting in the all-star game. So I don't think that that has anything to do with it. But in terms of what guys have been doing up until this point, because that's what the All Star Game is. It's half the season. What have you guys? What have you been doing since the beginning of the season up until last week when the fan vote stopped? I thought well, the Donovan think, Mitchell was well, part of the All Star Do you think that Brunson has the Knicks as finals as, as final four contenders in the league, like the fight, like the final, like the Eastern Conference Finals contenders? Do you think, that think they're that East, the, Eastern Conference Finals? I, I think that team is predicated solely on one guy and one guy only ticket. I ain't on the fence about that. They get further than they'd had if Julius Randle plays better. As good as Jalen Brunson is. No, 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 I, I agree with you on that. I'm just asking you, do you consider the Knicks, because you're talking about that you think Brunson should be over Dane, which I agree with you, but do you consider the Knicks a Final Four caliber team, like a team that would be in the conference finals? Like one yes, of the last if, four teams. If, 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 Jul if Julius Randle plays better, yes, they could be a conference well, finals Well, let's team. see. Let Well, let's see what teams can they beat, right? Can they beat Boston? I don't know. If Julius, That's a toss up if, because they play D. Hey, 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 they play D dub. Dub. The Knicks play yes, D. They do. The Knicks they play, do play D defense. dub. And when you play D, D dub, when you play defense and, and you can put up and you can score some points, because the Knicks are a better three point shooting team this year. When you can play defense, bro, and you can put up uh, some points and, and all, all uh, like he said, what you're called to do is not mess up. Bro, uh, I give the Knicks a shot against the Celtics, bro, because the Knicks, the Knicks defense is real. Their defense is running. Their offense has been shabby. You can say but you give them a shot. They get, they, Do you on, think they're going to beat them? I don't think they can beat them. I don't think they can beat them. Especially if they get, no, they get Mitchell Robinson okay. back. I think it's going to be a lot on if they get Mitchell Robinson back to help man that paint too. So I will put that out there. But I think that the Knicks have a shot to be in the Eastern Conference Finals against the Bucks. That's what I think. Do you think they'll beat them though? Like if you had to bet on it, would you bet on the Knicks? To beat the Bucks? To beat the Bucks? To beat the Celtics? No, I would, I would no. To be the Celtics, I would. To be the Celtics, I would. Because I think oh, that the Knicks, I think I, I I'll tell you what. I think they got better coaching for one. That, let me start right there. I think that they have better coaching. That's one. For two, mm. I think that uh that uh they play they can play more than one way. So I think that helps them in the long run is mm. the fact that they can play uh, beat you multiple. They don't have to just beat you by shooting threes. The Celtics mm -hmm. only play they only live and die by the three. That's what kills me about the Celtics when you get into a, a, a seven game series in a dog fight. Can you do more than shoot threes? That's the question. Can you do more than shoot three pointers? It's a question when you're right. that team. So that's that's a, those are the questions well, that with, we ask. With that, with, with, with that, with that being said, ticket, what you just said, just so you know, they held Miami to under 100, so they defend too. So let's not leave that part right, out. No, no, that's no, very no, important. no, 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 chill, chill. That's, no, I'm not saying that. that. And KP works in the post. You didn't hear me too, talk about well. the Celtics defense. You didn't hear me talk about the Celtics defense, chill. But I that's what no I'm saying. I hold on. I have no issues with their defense. I have issues with how they play offensively. I'm talking about they play one way, and and, and we've seen this over and over again. If they, to me, they have they have the personnel to win the chip. They don't have the right scheme. That's what I think about the Celtics. I don't like the shooting threes more than they shoot twos. I don't like that, bro. Because right. when you get in a seven-game series, if right. you're not hitting those threes and the other team is playing well-balanced basketball, you're going to mm -hmm. lose, bro. Right. I, I definitely can get with that logic. However, when I watched, when I watched Boston last night, when you talk about schemes and you talk about uh, Thibodeau being a better coach. The fact that they got Porzingis, who did roll his ankle, but the fact that they got Porzingis and how they use him, that's exactly what I was thinking, mm -hmm. how they use him in that zone. When they're putting him in the middle of that zone, now he's able to knock down that mid-range. Now what that does is that collapses the zone. That collapses the zone on him, which even opens up the long ball line even more for Jason Tatum, for Jalen Brown, for Pritchard, for all of those other guys. So that's the difference in what happened last year when they had Al Hawford in the middle. Because Al Hawford in the middle, he wasn't really the playmaker that Porzingis was. Add that to them playing defense and getting downhill like they did on the Boston Celtics. Don't get me wrong. They shot the long ball. They shot the long ball with the best of them yesterday. No question about that. But in terms of a seven-game series, I think that the Knicks would be competitive. I don't think that they would beat them. I saw Milwaukee last year in the first round of the playoffs go to pieces. 
I saw that. So there's no reason for me to think because I saw that, that they're, for them to run up on a Nick team who, let's say, coming into the playoffs, they're hot. Julius Randle got it going. And the way that they defend, there's no reason for me to think that that can't happen again. There's no well, reason they, for me to think. How can you feel game one or no, two? Real, real question. How can you, similar to what happened with the Miami Dolphins, how can we believe in the team that performs so bad against teams that are actually good? Me and Mars looked into this record well, yesterday. Well, they just beat the world champs last night. Yeah, and they're nine and seventeen against well, teams no, no, that no, are no. good. Like, well, you're only as good right. as your last game. That's what coaches say. No, no, no take it, cut that out. Take it, cut that out. No, 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 no. no. Kill Town knows it's the Kill Town. We're not going to excuse a whole a whole entire year of losing. They've been losing for a minute. I love you. I love you. You're my brother. I love you, bro. You always defend me. You're a wrestler. You need to talk to Vince McMahon. You're a wrestler. I, oh, yo, I'm going to tell, tell you, hold on. I'm going to tell you something. <laughs> you're only as good as your last game. You're only as good as your And listen, the last game, the la and this is when we tell, like, Kevin Garnett said something that was true last night. I heard him on the show. He said that now, like, once you get to All-Star break and beyond, that's when we telling who the dogs is and who the real contenders is. So now that we <clears> midway <throat> through the season, like he said, now we're going to start to see. You want to talk who, about dogs at the Knicks? Who, who There's oh, only one. Oh, 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 There's no, no, literally no, no, only saying, one dog, they, and that's it. No, no, I'm saying, but they started off right. They, I'm saying they started the second half that's of the season. True, they dog. started off right by trashing. The, the, Don't just the say dog. anything, Dub. Don't just say anything, Dub. Chill, chill. Let's be. I want you going to include Mitchell Robinson because you were getting a bunch of boards? No, not it's, Mitchell Robinson. Don't get me wrong. They got, 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 got a squad Dante full of dogs. OG, OG, and Anobi. They got a, a, a team full of dogs. And, and not only that, Dub. Just say you don't think Julius Randle is one. Just say that. Bro. I don't the, think Julius Randle is one. Yeah, just okay. say that, but don't say they only have one. Okay, my bad. Let's just let you know Julius is a dog. Bob believes Ellis. in defense and Bob like dogs. So I agree. I agree with Bob said, bro. They do have dogs over there. Even though I didn't like the OG That's trade the for what they them. gave them up, I agree with Bob. Like they have enough guys over there to where now they can like they can legitimately match up with you. You, you think it's a mismatch with the Knicks, bro? I like the Knicks team, bro. I like their team, bro. They're one well, we, we, to me. They're go ahead. I, I, I do. I, I do. I'm sorry, Brown. Go ahead. I, I got I, I got four super chats and they're all pertaining to the Knicks. We're not going to change the subject. Yep. And then after this, I do want to hear who you guys all think should be the starting backcourt in the East, since this is the controversial topic right now. But yep. Butter Biscuit sent through a few super chats. He said, thank you, Ticket. You spitting, bro. Jalen Brunson averaged 30 in the playoffs. These dudes just hating. They got so much disrespect just because it's the Knicks. We are legit title contenders. We win it. No, Chill Town not hating. Chill Town is not hating. Chill Town is not hating. Chill Town said that Jalen Brunson should be starting. Y'all got to listen to what he said. He said he thinks Jalen Brunson should be starting in the All-Star game, which means he holds him in high regard. So he's not hating on the Knicks. He's just saying he don't think the Knicks can beat the Celtics, bro. That's To me, that's not hating because the Celtics have gone farther than the Knicks in recent years. So to me, that's not hating what Chill Town said. I just disagree with Chill Town as far as I think the Knicks got a chance to win the series. Because I like how they match up. I just like how they're coached. I like everything about them. I, I know Bob likes that that grit and grind type of style, especially defensively. You know what I'm saying? So for me personally, I know Bob likes Julius Randle. So for me personally, like I said, I like Tibbs, man. I like how he coaches teams. And I just think that if you if they can steal a game chill, game one or game two, that series going to get real scary if the Bucks don't go up 2-0. And, I mean, and we've seen – and, 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 Doug, don't make your face like that because we've seen – this This is the I, problem I, I'm having. I was about you, to sneeze. I was about to sneeze. I'm not oh, going to okay. lie. <laughs> <laughs> like, you over here throwing shots. I'm over here trying to fight a sneeze right. over here. Because, Doug, you look like – you had that look like, what are you talking about? That was a look like <laughs> – <laughs> My bad. Like, but what, but what, I'm, what I'm thinking is, is when, 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 it comes to the, when it comes to the Knicks, again – you said it last year, Dub, before the playoffs started with your boys. I think we could get them, end quote. I think we could get them. With that being said, y'all didn't have the best player in the series. So the fact that you don't have the best player in the series does not mean we can't win the series. Y'all just proved that last year. Y'all proved mm -hmm. last year that because you don't have the best player in the series does not mean that you can't win it. With that being said, with that being said, the catalyst to this, because Brunson has already proven when he was in Dallas, and last year with the Knicks, that his game is raised in the playoffs. The catalyst to this is Julius Randle. He is the difference. He is the guy that's going to determine whether or not they go deep into the playoffs or they flame out early. He's going to be the difference. I do think that as well, but I keep <clears throat> looking at the teams. And when you were talking about the – like when Ticket asked the question, top four in the East, even if Julius Randle's playing well, I still find it very difficult for them to beat Boston. 
I still find it very difficult to beat the Bucks. I still find it very difficult to beat the Sixers. I still find it very difficult to beat Miami. They definitely um, can beat Philly, though. Yes, they can. They definitely can be yes, no. they can beat Philly. What Joel would do to that crew is going to be nuts. They smoked them we, in Philadelphia bro. by 30. Joel hasn't done anything oh, in the last couple of playoffs. So my, I'm pretty sure. Doug, you're, only, you're only good as your last game, Doug. I'm pretty We're sure. Not, I'm, I'm pretty sure I saw them smoke Philadelphia. No, in Philly I am with that Philly. right now. It was the First second was. worst loss that Philly's had. I'm okay. pretty sure I saw that with Joel Embiid on the floor. By the way, destroyed them. Joel was and there, it's yes. not, and it's not like Joel Embiid has this extensive track record of just balling out in the playoffs. Heck, he just fizzled. Let's not do that because we could say the same thing about them if they make it to the. Then what? They're gonna make it all the way to the finals because they just beat the Denver Nuggets who just won. No, I ain't saying that. Okay, chair. like no, we, we, the Sixers still are, are gonna. It's still a, 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 has just hit the screen. Okay, I'm go sorry, ahead, go ahead, go ahead, I'm go sorry, ahead, go ahead. but Dirt TV clearly has higher motivations and a new vision for the show. He said, "I love to hear y'all thoughts on prep school basketball and how it affects public school basketball. I really want to hear what Big Ox got to say." I personally think it's ruining high school basketball. Uh, how do we feel about prep school, y'all? I didn't. I didn't think it was ruining high school basketball back in the day. Like it was cool. Like it was. A, it was a good chance for. Um, it was a good chance uh, for you know for students to get that extra year and you know get ready for college. Nowadays, how it's looking is just. Um, yeah, it is. I think it is ruining basketball now. It's ruining the game. Uh, so similar to the transfer portal, just why, kids why, just going up. What's the problem, big ox? What's the problem with prep school basketball? It's because it's just um, it's just turning into AAU ball. You know what I'm saying? It's turning, it's turning into AAU ball. There used there used to be a time for AAU. You know what I'm saying? During the springtime yeah. and the summertime, and there's time to get to your high school team and play ball. You know what I'm saying? And now it's now it's just AAU all year <laughs> round. You know what I'm saying? So. <laughs> Clearly, it's beef in the chat right well, now. Well, well, I, I, guess, you know, yeah, I, 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 I guess because I got a one, I got one in the chamber for you. I was ready to get it off, and I'm tight now. I had to change it. Go well, I, I guess we're not doing, I'm ready I guess, to get it off. I, I guess we're not doing high school basketball no more. I guess we're getting right back to it. Let's see. Let's not do what. Hey, but uh, appreciate you, Dirt TV. Um, we don't talk about high school basketball enough, but your highness Charles doesn't want to talk about high school basketball. He said, nah, we switch him back. Jalen Brunson averaged 24 points per game on 43% field goal shooting and 29 from three against the Cavs. He bought against Miami, but y'all acting like he had some curry run. I want to hear what Dub was saying. Because this is glazed. He's spitting. Uh, he's spitting. Oh, yeah. so, so, go ahead, go ahead, he's spitting. So, so yeah, boy, no, no, because we're gonna if we're gonna use the regular season. Sub dog, thirty. Right? That's sub thirty. With with the de with the Denver Nuggets, we're not gonna sit here and assume just because they waxed the Denver Nuggets that they could wax them in the postseason, especially it's in the finals. Waxed, dude, but you know, <laughs> since we are gonna be using regular season games, and ticket tells me, oh yeah, they could beat Boston. Cool. Let's use regular season games. They haven't beat Boston all year long. They're 0 and 3 Did against they them. With OG? Did they they, play with OG? they are 0-3 three. You see that, Ron? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're gonna change, change the topic. And, change and, change change and, and we're changing it again. And we're changing it again. But last, I asked you one question. No, they beat no, Milwaukee no, one no, time. No, 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 no. That's all I got. They only beat Milwaukee one time. Wait, you don't want to make the trade. They're they're one and three against Milwaukee. Sorry, ticket. Sorry, Doug. But their TV. Said we talking about high school basketball. He said we done with the Knicks. Uh, look, 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 look. Nah, that's only twenty. That's only twenty. That's bring it back. Bring it back. We got. That's we got. Only switch that's, only that's only twenty. That's only twenty. Switch it back. That's only twenty, bro. Oh, <laughs> damn. That's only twenty, bro. Oh, oh my god. Yeah, just, it it, it appears you are five dollars oh. short, my brother. Continue, Ox. So you know, like that's it's, disgusting. It's, it's, they're turning. They're turning it all into AAU. It's all. It's all a popularity contest. It's all you know. That's all it is, bro. And it's it's not good. It's not it's not helping develop players into to that next level that they got to be. It's just it's just all about dominating high school, which doesn't get you ready for college, which doesn't get you ready for the pros. So that's why I think it's I think it's detrimental. I don't think it's a good thing at all. Ain't that what they're doing in high school anyway? In terms of popularity, if you played somewhere long enough, because prep school you only go there for like one oh, year. Uh -oh. There when, we go. When, when, there when, we when, go. When you when, when you're in high school, I'm in high school for four years, so I'm gonna. I'm 
Sorry, chill. <laughs> oh, <my laughs> That's your crazy. Highness Charles. <laughs> your Highness Charles said pocket change, switch it back. Hey, but chill, yeah, I don't, chill, I don't make the rules. I just abide by it. The right? Bucks, the Bucks are one and three. I mean, the Knicks are one and three against the Bucks too. So what do we? If we're using regular season games, no, 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 the two I'm, teams. How many of those? Hey, Doug, you my boy. I asked you a question. Did they play them since they made the trade, though? That's all I'm asking you. Facts, no. ticket. Yeah, I'm gonna Oh, get my back. God. Ticket. No, no, no. no, 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 no. Oh, I'm my God. Why, I'm going to tell you why I use that logic, right? Facts. I know it's only been two games. But for me watching your heat in two games, I'm off them dudes. I don't what like them getting rid of you. Listen, what is no, wrong with you? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Doug, listen to me, Doug. Listen to me, Doug. Listen to me, Doug. I don't like what I'm seeing without Kyle Lowry, bro. And I think Kyle Lowry brought a lot to that team that we didn't see, that wasn't in the stat sheet. And I'm talking about grit. I'm talking about toughness. I'm talking about locker room presence. I'm talking about a lot of different things that he brought. Because remember, you got to think about him. He was a vet now that UD's gone. See, UD ran a lot of stuff in that locker room. He had a lot of stuff together. He got a lot of guys right. So now that you got rid of Kyle Lowry, he was still – now it's just Jimmy. So you need the opposite of Jimmy sometimes in that locker room. You need somebody who can be an authority to Jimmy. The one who could do that was the one who has the world championship. And and, and that's Kyle Lowry. That's a, that's a common presence. You always need those two dynamics in, in the locker room. Bob knows this. Chill know this. Like, bro, you can't just have one dude like Michael Jordan always barking down your throat. You're going to need another. You're going to need a guy like Scottie Pippen you can go to. He's going to be cool with you. Like, hey, man, just chill. Be all right. They do got Kevin Love, though. They no, no, but I'm saying, but yeah, 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 that, they, that they is true, losing, but he not. They he, were losing he, before the trade with Kyle Lowry. Kyle, yeah, they, not like, Kyle Lowry's been having a, a terroristic performance in the month of January. I'm no, not but lie. I don't, I don't, Dub. I, I'm just saying, I just don't, like I said. He's bro, talking like, about, Ticket is talking about Kyle Lowry from another ass. Did you he's say terroristic? About, he's talking from the intangibles, yes, the intangibles. And that matter. They were losing with those intangibles before Kyle Lowry. The three, they're on a five-game losing streak. They've lost two years. They lost three with Kyle Lowry. So they've been losing, like, it's... They, there's a little bad run. Their offense has been cooked from the last like few weeks. I've been with them. But um, overrated? You think so, dog? Oh my overrated? God. Never mind. Uh, <laughs> Yo, Rod, this is let's, insane, let's, 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 let's bro. Get to it. Let's do it. Let's this do it. beautiful. This is hey, what this is all about. You think that Cooper flag is overrated? I do. 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 I yeah, people are talking about him like he's the next coming. NBA wait, 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 Ron, 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 wait, 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 wait. Oh, let me cook up. Let me cook Dirt. up. Ron, let me cook up. Dirt television. Zero, Sorry, zero, but zero just five minutes. Said I love, I love chaos. Bob, cook up. But Bob, I'm, what we're going to see what to cook up. We're going on, back on the. On. the I'm cooking up. He, he, no, nope, he wasn't. He wasn't specific. He wasn't specific. So let me cook. Okay. Let me cook oh, okay. because the real. I'm gonna tell y'all the real topic at hand. The real topic at hand is TCU women basketball. That's the real topic at hand. Okay. Zero just vibing. Wanna, this is what you wanted. No, they, they, I want to shout out. Send another shout 25. Out. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Y'all chill out. I want to shout out Piper Davis, Ella Hamlin, and Makaya Moore, as well as Sarah Sylvester for coming to the rescue to save that wonderful season that the TCU Horn Frogs Lady Basketball, they were on the way to doing. <laughs> had a lot of injuries. Had to. They had to. Uh, what you call it? Had to forfeit games. We had. They had. They had three walk-ons: Piper Davis, Ella Hamlin, Makaya Moore. Come and save the day, as well as a sophomore volleyball player by the name of Sarah Sylvester, six who can rock too. By the way, big uh -huh. she could play. Middle too. middle blocker. Play. They came to save the day. Yes, she could play too. Your yeah. Highness Charles, to mm -hmm. some of you guys' rescue, said, "My bad. Y'all know what it is." Go ahead, Mars. Go I ahead, Mars. Wait, is, wait, Charles. Are we going back to the Knicks? Is we going back to? No. Uh, going back what, to what the point that you saying, you talking about the Miami oh. Heat? Oh yeah, the Miami Heat. Yeah, they were they were losing before. Um, they were losing before they're Kyle Lowry got there. Yeah, so I mean, before Terry Rozier got there, they were, they've been on a stretch. Dub can probably attest to this more than me. But what I've been seeing since the turn of the new year, the offense has just been inconsistent and cooked. Like, it hasn't Terrible. Been. And Kyle Lowry's a part of that because I haven't seen him make a shot since twenty twenty three. So Kyle Lowry's a part of that. Fourteen straight, and them, fourteen straight misses, Miles at the long. Then time. bringing in Terry Kyle Rozier. Lowry. I mean, there's always going to be an adjustment period. I remember everyone lost their mind after the James Harden trade. They started zero and six. Now all of a sudden they're playing like the best team in the NBA. So there's always an adjustment period when you implement someone who's one of the better scorers on the team, someone who does have the ball in his hands. But I mean, I don't think it's the end of the world for the Miami Heat. I mean, their next game is against the Knicks. So maybe on Monday we'll come and we'll talk about whatever happens Back. in that game. And if they beat the Knicks, we'll see if anyone changes their tune. If they oh, lose to the Knicks, we'll see. Bro, but like, if they so, beat the Knicks, please, 
I need to be here because I'm going to cook this man ticket the same way. <laughs> Why aren't you mad at Giannis for getting his coach fire ticket? No, I've always wanted to ask oh, that. Giannis said it wasn't him. Giannis said it wasn't him. Man, no, you a lie. Right Dub, stop right here, Dub. Stop right here. Stop right here. Let me ask you a question, Dub. Were you or I in the locker room? Were you or Smith, I in the locker room? Cut it out. Bro, no, 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 you can't no, do no, that. No, you can't no, do no, that. No, 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 you you get on everyone else's cases for getting no, coaches fired, no, and you're not in no, the locker room either. There's no, no way you're doing this. Dub, hold on one second, Dub. <laughs> <laughs> no no That's what I'm saying. Hold, hold on, Dub, Dub. Just give me the respect and listen to what I'm saying. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. The GM came out and said he didn't consult with Giannis, Middleton, or any of those guys when he made the decision. Giannis came out and said he was surprised the dude got fired. He didn't know the dude got fired. He said he don't even meddle in that business, and he hate that people push lies that say he hire and fire coaches when he have nothing to do with that. That's what he said on the post-game interview. The GM came out and said they had nothing to do with it. I didn't consult with them when I made the move. He said, Giannis says that what they do is he said, yes, we're stars. They may come to us a few times during the season and say, what you think about this? What you think about he that? Lied. I want you to talk to this coach. I want you to talk. Hold on. Come on. This is a great topic right here. Derek Fisher, Derek Fisher, Coach Matt Barnes' sons. Great topic. Somebody else, somebody got to cut me off. Keep going, keep going. It's 25. It's 25. It was 25. It was 25 topic. I'm sorry. I don't make the rules. I just abide by it. It was a 25 ball ticket. That's what it was. Chat from Dirt Television. Hey, Dirt, I'm going to put some respect on your name. You're not Dirt TV no more. You are Dirt Television. Dirt Television said, let's talk about how Derek Fisher's coaching Matt Barnes' sons now. Bro, don't, don't, don't be childish. Don't, don't, child, don't be childish and petty because this, this, no this is grown. This is grown. This is grown man. Shit. This, 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 this is grown kids. man. Shit. Them, them, two, them two young boys. They deserve yeah, to have a good coach kids. like Derek Fisher. This is grown man. Well, shit. No, no, no. I'm, I'm happy. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Because I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy that Mac Barnes is being a man about it and not being petty about it. Because them two young men have have a lot of talent. They are going to be very good basketball players, and they need a they need a coach like Derek Fisher. I don't care about what happened in the past with him and his wife, man. That's 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 between the. That's why Derek brought it up. Derek uh -uh, didn't bring it up. I know that. I know that. I know that. He brought it up. That's what he brought it up. I'm saying that. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. That don't that don't got nothing to do with nothing. Right. Matt, Matt, Barnes, Matt Barnes was upset about that. I mean, rightfully so, I suppose. You know what I'm saying? But whatever, though. You know what I'm saying? Them, them young men deserve to have a good coach like Derek Fisher. He's in. He's still in their mother's life. It's not like it's not like you know what I'm saying. That's 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 damn their step pops now. So you know, you you got you got. I don't like the, I don't like the comment on that type of stuff because I just think that type I mean, of stuff is just personal. You know what I'm saying? I leave that like that type of well, stuff right there. That's just like I, I mean, I'm with you. Really like, yeah. he, you know, he be on, he be no, talking no, no, about no, it on no, TV. No, no. You know, I, I'm, I'm with you, but when it's, when you yeah. talking about like young kids like that and stuff like that, I don't like to touch on that because you we really don't know like the, all the dynamics and stuff. That's personal stuff, so I really don't like to touch. God, that bank teller look good as all know what. Uh oh, get a loan ticket. You might have to go say something. Go get a loan. You might have to go holla at ticket. Hey, holla, but no, like I said to y'all though, on the on the cool on the cool though. Uh, Doug, what I was saying to you was this, bro, and I'm I'm just gonna tell you like this, bro. Listen, we can't see. Here's the thing, right? When when I said LeBron got coaches fired, Pat Riley came out and said LeBron James came to him and said fire Eastport. Pat Riley said that, so that's not me just making that up and putting that out there in the air. Pat Riley said LeBron came to him. D Wade said LeBron James came to him, and D Wade told Shannon Sharp said he told LeBron, no, uh -uh, you don't want Pat Riley to come down here. Go look at that. You interview. know what? Let me oh, tell you why. Okay, go ahead, go ahead. I'll let you finish. Go ahead, go ahead. And LeBron never denied that. He never denied that. All I'm saying to you with Giannis is Giannis was asked directly about that after the last game. He asked, did you have a, a hand in the hiring and firing of this coach? He says that's the biggest lies that's ever told. He said, bro, listen, they always come to you star players and say, hey, what you think about this coach? What you think about that coach? Bro, remember, Jason Kidd built up Giannis. He didn't know Jason Kidd was getting fired. He was infuriated when they fired Jason Kidd without the call. Them, 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 them DUIs. Oh, no, no, them no, DUIs. No, 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 hey, y'all, don't. Hey, never drink and drive, man. Call it so cab. No, no, call no, 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 no. But by, all right, hold on, all right, I'm going to tell you, I, drive, this is the one thing, all right, this is the one thing I don't like doing. I don't like putting somebody on something on somebody's name that I don't know is true or not. Right, okay, stay right there. Can, hold on, hold on, Doug. I can only go by what they say until it's proven otherwise, bro, because if you do that and then later on you find out dude was telling the truth, with that character assassination, you've already put the damage already been done. 
So when I say when I say what I say about LeBron James, it's because Pat Riley came out and said, and D Wade said LeBron James came to them and said, I want this dude out. Period. See, no, see, it's actually the reverse. reverse. They actually they actually said that LeBron wasn't didn't do that. No, no, no. Pat people Riley said, no, no, no. Pat Riley, no, no, no. Google it right now. Pat Riley said LeBron came into this to his office he's, he's and it said, it, it said that LeBron James told him that he wanted he's him Google to come him. coach and wanted Espo out, and he told he's LeBron get down there and play. Espo's your coach. That's what he told him. So don't say that's not true. And then, and then, and then uh, on the Shannon Sharp show on the on the club Shay Shay, D Wade backed that up. D Wade said LeBron came to him and was like, "Yo, we got to get Espo out." He said, "Man, hell no." He said, "You don't want Pat to come back down here." He said, "Shit, we be having four hour practices." That's exactly what he told uh, uh, Shannon Sharp on Club Shay Shay. So this is what his team, this is what his teammates and the owner of his team put out there, bro. So that's all. That's what I'm saying right there. And I'm not lying. Ooh. All you gotta do is go Google it. And look, hold on, LeBron never came out and denied it. He never denied it. See what I'm saying? Dirk Television said Marzen Ticket. I asked Chill on his channel, but why does J Kid get more respect as a not, PG? Not, 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 get, passes, not get. Does not get more respect as a PG. He passes the eye test. As as at least the second or third best PG of all time. He doesn't get get that much credit because guys like Dub will praise Chris Paul, who's a winner of nothing. Guys like Dub will praise Chris Paul, who's a perennial choke artist. See what I'm saying? That's what guys like Dub would do. J Kid went to three NBA finals. See what I'm saying? (laughs) And and actually won one. Hold on, and actually won one. So the thing that's see that's the reason why J Kid don't get the credit he deserves as a guy because you got guys like Dub that run around here. That pray that'll praise a guy like Chris Paul, put Chris Paul on these all time world levels when Chris Paul has been a perennial choke artist and then come in here and tell y'all that it's Doc Rivers' fault. Cool. Watch this ticket. This is why you're cooked. Pat Riley <laughs> stated oh, that God damn. Pat Pat Riley stated he never he never really asked him to get fired. The only thing that came to mind was LeBron asked him, Do you would you ever think about coaching why again? That and that's it. No, 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 no. Adderall. That's I, was just bringing, I was just bringing that up. I was just bringing that up. Yeah, no, I was no, just no. bringing that up. So that's no, why I'm you're cooked that, there, buddy. So you were lying there. Pat Riley, no, no. Pat Riley said. And, and, and the owner. Oh, and the, no, but no, Jason King. What is this going to do with Jason King? Yeah, get back to Jason King. But to Dirt TV's, to Dirt TV, Jason could definitely needs more respect to be a top five uh, uh, point guard because I think But do you have him over Chris Paul? I, no, but they're right next to each other, literally. I have Chris Paul and then Jason King. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's stop right there. How don't you have a guy? Who went to three NBA finals? Did everything Chris Paul did and more? How do you have him on? How do you have Chris Paul on the same level as that guy? He's in terms of team success, though. Oh my not, god! Not, 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 not only hold on Mars, not only team. Not, no, hold on Mars. I'm talking about individual success and have more team success. Individual Why success. Yes. Individual what success. What's, in, how, what's individual success mean? How many? Hold on. JK led the league in assists, right? Yeah. Hmm. Right. Okay. J. Kidd was a was a uh, J. Kidd was a walking double double too, right? Like Chris Paul was for a few years, right? Yep. Okay. Finished second in league. J. Kidd led. J. Kidd led. Second in league MVP votes, just like Jason Kidd did. J. Kidd led two teams to the NBA Finals. Well, Dub, let's let's just it's gonna come it's gonna come back to teams. He led two teams. Okay. Yeah. The Nets. Yeah. The Nets. Let 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 let. Oh, I thought you were talking about Dallas. I thought you were talking about Dallas. Let's 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 stick let's stick to Jason Kidd and 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 Chris Paul because I know I know how you are in terms of just basketball players. So let's stick to that. So a a dude in Jason Kidd who is responsible if you're a defender for basically almost every play because he was almost a walking triple double. The way he rebound, the way he, the, his his ability to pass, not only his ability to pass, his ability to speed the game up. He was an he was an elite defender, like Chris mm-hmm. Paul. He was a switchable defender, not only a switchable defender. He caused havoc, rebounding the basketball, speeding up the game, controlling the game, getting everybody else involved. And as a bigger guard, he caused havoc for everybody else. I'm just talking about him as a player. If I had to choose between him and Chris Paul, I'll give you the edge in Chris Paul, maybe being a better scorer. I will give you that edge. It's not by a lot, but I'll give you that edge. I think he's a better shooter, and I do think that he's oh. a better scorer. I'll give I'll give you that edge. With that not being by a lot as a scorer? With, 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 that, with that being said, with, go, that, with, with, with that being said, when I'm thinking about an overall point guard, an all-around point guard, absolutely, absolutely, I'll, I'll go with Jason Kidd. Number one, it's not even as close as a scorer. 
Not even, not even up for debate. He clears him in all aspects in terms of scoring the ball. Then we're gonna talk. Let's bring up accolades since everyone up here lo loves accolades. Same amount all, all NBA defensive teams, more all NBA teams. Uh, I think the same amount, if not the same amount of assists, the same more assist steals, titles, yeah. the same assist titles, the same uh, uh, six times steals leader, rookie of the year. Yeah. And we're talking about let's not act. Chris Paul made it to a finals, and he was right. cooking. In that finals as well. So let's not yep. act as if. And again, against the oh, yeah, Golden State Warriors, <laughs> mm -hmm. that crew right there pushed the Golden KD Warriors that everyone here says is a super duper team. It's a cheat code and they cheated the league. He pushed that game to seven with him being hurt. Mm -hmm. So let's not act as if that CP get credit for that. He, why don't he get credit for that? Pushing him to seven when he's hurt. What? Yeah, uh, well, he played. He played. Well, they were up three two. They were up three two. They were up three two with him. That logic doesn't work. No, 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 no. That logic doesn't work against Jay Kidd because here's the thing: Jay Kidd, he went to two, two straight NBA Finals, and guess what happened to him? He ran into the greatest duo, one of the greatest duos, and if not the greatest duo in NBA history outside of Mike and Scotty. He ran into a prime Kobe and Shaq two years he in a row. He got destroyed. If, if he doesn't, hold on, if he doesn't do that, right, come on. It wasn't two he years in a row. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, again, again. One of those years. Another all-time great team, though. Hold on, hold on, hold on. The Earth Brothers are not an all-time great team. Another all-time great duo. They work better. No, Manu, Manu, Manu was a rookie and Tony Parker was in year two. Hey, hey, hold on. Last year, David Robinson. Hey, Ron. I guess. One of those years with Kobe and Shaq, they lost one game in the playoffs. One of those years. They ran. That was the year. No, the year before. No, 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 no,
Wins and losses is something that's something uh, an argument he'll never win. But let's not act that he don't perform. He performs for a good portion of his career, especially in the postseason, especially in the regular season. And a guy in Chris Paul having the longer career, longevity is crucial for you, Chilltown. A guy who had a longer career than Jason Kidd and performing performing at a higher level than him for, for a long period of time. For, for longer, long yes. Well, Jason Kidd showed up in NBA teams. The more NBA teams is what, why you don't so, see so, dirt so, television. I'm sorry. I, I, don't I don't see. Yes, yes, it is. Yes, it oh, is. Me go on. Ahead, I tried ahead. to tell you to get it off. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Coming back with another like, twenty-five dollars. That's why that. you make me uh, upset, Chill Town. There's in, no way. In case you guys didn't know, today's Just show is on the subject. Dirt television. January twenty-sixth is officially Dirt Television Day in the United States of the panel. Um, he said, "I got time." And this pocket change is for all the pocket watchers. Mm. Let's talk about CP3. Let's talk about how CP3 is the GOAT choke artist. Mars is capping. Mm. I, never even, I never even spoke Talkin about Chris Paul. I just said the 03 Spurs weren't a juggernaut and the 18 Warriors were. <laughs> I never said Chris Paul was or wasn't a choke artist. I never even said anything about that. Mars I didn't even, I didn't I don't even compare understand. Jason Kidd and Chris Paul. All I did was say the 03 Spurs aren't as good of a team as the team that the Chris Paul Houston Rockets had to go against. That's well, all I said. I never even compared them as players. I never said Chris Paul's never choked. I never, I never even said Chris Paul was better than Jason Kidd. Well, how am I capping? Send him over 25 and tell me how I'm capping. I don't understand how John Stockton gets so much love for doing oh, here we go the same this. exact oh, thing. Here, here we go. No, this. because he's he he's a choker too. Go go it all over the place. That's but what he Dad, does. He's Dad, a choker. John hasn't said anything about John Stockton. So right. I'm we, just saying. Let, 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 let's 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 stick to the let's stick to the subject. Here, nah, bro. Bro. You talk, you, you're talking right, about Chris Paul and Jason Kidd, right? So we're talking about a guy in, who showed up in 1994. From 1994, what was Jason Kidd's prime years? I would probably have to say from maybe. Like 2000 to 2008. No, I'm I'm gonna go back a little no. bit. I think that I think I'm when, when I say when I think prime, maybe 99, 98, 99 to probably 2000, probably eight or not or, or 2008 or 2009. Including, oh, including 2008 part of his prime. So, 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 he was probably he was probably on the, was, any of the Dallas years as part of his prime. He was on the back end of it. when he when he got to Dallas. He was he was at the end of it. How about that? Is that fair? Yeah, I wouldn't push back too much. I'd probably say from like the lockout year to like 07, 08, maybe. Right. Like so I think he got on that. I think when did he get to Dallas in, 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 in 2010? I think he got to Dallas. Uh, no, I think it was at 09. Oh, 09. Okay. So I think he was there for a couple years before the championship. He That's was. You, he so got eight, there in 08. 08. He got One traded. Eight. He got traded in 08 that season. Okay. So, okay. So his first full year was 09. His first full year was okay, okay, yeah, yeah. right, okay. right. So, in 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 terms of in terms of Jason Kidd with those years, just like with Chris Paul, I like you said, like you said, Dub. I don't think it's that far off, but I do have Jason Kidd ahead of Chris Paul, and I have him ahead of Chris Paul because of everything else that he did. I'll give you the scoring. I don't think it's as far as you. I don't think it's as far as you think it is. The reason why here's why I don't think you you I, here's why I don't think it's as far as you think it is because I think you're thinking on a one on one level. I'm thinking about the point guard that Jason Kidd was, the transition point guard that Jason Kidd was, what he was in transition and how good he was in transition to be able to score. He was able later on in his career to put a long ball in his game, which was pretty yeah, good. Which but other weird. than but 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 yeah, I know that was crazy that years later he was able to put a long ball in his game like that. <laughs> but with that being said, the transition point guard that he was and how fast he was able to play and get buckets and finish around the rim that's unmatched with a lot of point guards man a lot i'll give you the shooting in the mid-range i'll give you the long ball early on but that transition i think that i don't think that we can i don't even the think you can discuss that. oh my god this is just as players. bad as what you say Giannis and you get offensively bro what about jason kids scoring in the half court yeah the, what? That, well that's what i'm talking about Mars. so when we talk about a shooter I think Chris Paul was better as a shooter, both in the mid range and in the long ball in both of their primes. I think he was better. I think Jason Kidd ended up stretching the defense later on in his career. So I'll give you that. But the fact that Jason Kidd played as fast as he did and he sped teams up, I think that that was a big deal in, in, in his development as a point guard, not just his development as a point guard, his ability to score because he put so much pressure on the defense because he plays so fast and he got to the rim with the best of them. Was able to finish over bigger, 
was able to finish over bigger guards, was able to finish over big men and put people in foul trouble. And then when they limited transition, and it's something they struggle with, when they limited transition and it would sit here and make them be more half-court offense-oriented, the mm -hmm. offense was stagnant. The offense wasn't great. At least right. CP3 and the crews he's been on. That's why it's just a clear discrepancy. Like, it's not even close. I'll give Especially you I'll give you, I'll give you the shooting. I'll give you that. I'm not even shooting it's everything. Like shooting. He can about get about downhill. Board. Even in the half court, Jason, Jason Kidd got downhill in the half court. Yes, he did. But he Jason Kidd wasn't ready. as good of a finisher as I think you think he was. Yes, he was, Mars. Sure yeah, he I was. Yeah, I disagree. Yeah, I disagree. Yes, he was. I, I think he struggled finishing over length consistently, personally, but... I mean, maybe, maybe, maybe that's me hating on Jason. Every, everybody, everybody struggles to uh, finish it over length, Mars. No, I said heavily. Like, I'm not saying, and that's why I said I'm, I don't think he was as good of a finisher as Chill thinks. Right. I'm not saying he was Chill, a bad finisher. Chill, I think, Chill, I think I he, think he, mean, I think he struggled think around the rim. I think he struggled around the rim more than Chill thinks he did. No, I think he'd be a way too I didn't say that. I'm just saying I think he struggled around the rim more than you think he did. We can chill. We don't we don't we don't gotta do this, chill. We don't gotta be nice about it. There's this really shouldn't be this long of a conversation. That's about what Chris Paul. You just a CP3 hater. What are you talking about? you can say you can call it what you want. You can call it what you want. Nah, bro. So yeah, Ox does hate Ox does hate. I don't hate I don't hate Chris Paul. You made like 20 you made like 20 guards better than him. He's just hype. Right. How, right. Many, how many? Hey, the, the, he the, had like 2025. I remember this. No, that was Ox, Ox, I had, Ox, right I had, quick. I had, I had hold on, hold on, hold on, right quick. Ox, Ox, hold on, right quick. I'm going to let you get this final takeoff, Ox, because I want to, me, and I'm assuming everybody else wants to hear why you have Jason Kidd over Chris Paul, and then we do have to move on. Right. Go ahead, Ox. The floor is yours. Well, I've already spoken about it more. I, I, all I wanted to say, I didn't really want to bring more into the conversation. All I just wanted to tell Chilltown, like, you're just being a little too nice. It's really not as close as we're making the scene. There's, there's a there's a like the impact. And why on, isn't it close? Im, impact like Jake when Jake kid Jake kid good does more for his team than Chris Paul good as far as winning I don't care about the stats and who finishes better over length I'm talking about who 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 which point which point guard does more for their team it's obviously Jake kid but based but based on more like. Based on two finals was, appearances, Mars. No, no, I don't know. I don't think it's views no, that way. That's why I'm no, based on based on just based on based on being able to conduct a better squad. You know what I'm saying? In transition and in half court, he might no no. Okay, yeah, sure. Chris Paul might be able to score better in. Got that twenty five. Dirt Television said, "R.I.P. Kobe." <sighs> I want to hear everybody's favorite Kobe <laughs> moment. Before we do that, just a, a quick moment of silence for the great Black Mamba, Kobe Bean Bryant. A true legend that yeah, the game true, honestly misses. And can you be the same? Can you be this? My favorite moment. Can you be the same animal but a different beast? Oh. Love that commercial. Okay. <laughs> that was my favorite. Yo, that's one of the funniest commercials I've ever seen, bro. Shout out to Kanye. My favorite Kobe um, Bryant moment. And chill, you've seen a lot in person. Be, be in you 11 0. Yeah, that's, that's, that's something. Chill, chill. I mean, I mean 11 0. Gotta I mean be in the top me. tier Kobe moments, not gonna lie. It is, to be honest with you. It is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. That game four and 0 1 against the Kings. That's the best <laughs> performance that, and, and I've seen a bunch of them against the Kings. That's, I've never seen anything like that and with my eyes. And I've seen Jordan play in person, I've seen Lajuan play in person, I've seen Malone play in person. Um, I seen Doc playing person. Bryant was magnificent. I, I I had never seen anything like that that day. That was incredible, baby. Can, can you was, explain to us in person what it actually felt like, the aura, and what, what was going on in your mind as it was happening? So, 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 number one, it was a playoff game. And Arco Arena during that time, 2000, 2001, it was electric. It, it, it was a place that if you were an opposing team, more times than not, you did not want to be in that building. You did not. And – Bryant had this aura about him, like, I am not afraid of none of you dudes. Not only am I not afraid of none of you dudes, it was year five for him. So he just came out like, I'm so prepared for this. And I'm going to show y'all that I'm that dude in the mid range, in the post, in transition. He was just doing whatever he wanted, whenever he wanted, getting whatever he wanted. And not just scoring, playing on the defense, playing on the defensive end. He just looked so comfortable in such a hostile environment. Right. Such a hostile environment. He just looks so comfortable. Like I'm just I've been I've been preparing for this all my life. And the way that they bounced him on the strength of him, he went 40. I think he went 48 and 16 that day. It was it was the most magnificent performance I'd ever seen. He was incredible. 
Sounds like a top 10 player to I me. I would like to say this. <laughs> yeah, that's a fact. I would like to say this. Uh, all seriousness. And it's probably not one of his best games because really was really what happened in the fourth quarter. But that Kobe last game was crazy. I've never cried over a game, but I almost cried during watching that game. I'm not gonna lie. Like, I was this close to crying. I'm not gonna hold you. Which game? The his last game. game. Yeah. The... 60 points. Yeah. I, I was I was this close, like this this close, but I was like, nah, I ain't a bitch. I, There's I'm a lot sorry, of people. Bro. Well, wait a minute, bro. Well, well, well. You don't got it. You don't have to be like that, though, Dub. Because this generation, <laughs> yeah, Dub, you do no was very much like how I was in two thousand three. Jordan was clearly over in two thousand three. I wasn't ready to let him go, though. I wasn't. Mike, can you stick around for one more year? Can you do just 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 one more? That's it. Give me one more year, Mike. That's it. Even though I one knew he was day. over. That's it. Can, can can you play just one more year, Mike? Because I wasn't ready to let him. I wasn't ready to let him go. I wasn't, even though I knew he was over. So I can appreciate this with with with, with Kobe in, in 2016. I, I I can definitely appreciate this generation. Yes, I I get it. One more day. I definitely get it. <laughs> Mars, can I get your top Kobe moment? Well, I'm too young to have appreciated Kobe live. Like when I started watching basketball, Kobe was washed already. So. Um, oh yeah, that's that was, right. I yeah, that, that, that was that was post torn Achilles. I I didn't see Pete Kobe Bryant live, so everything I've appreciated is going back in time. But when he did um, pass, there was like, because you hear like, if you're in the UK and you hear about basketball, the players you is MJ, LeBron, Kobe, and Steph. They're like the four guys who everyone knows. Kobe was like. The most iconic everyone even in even in the uk i know you hear the stories about oh when you shoot and you yell kobe that was a uk thing too i don't know how it got here but it got here <laughs> so like we knew we knew about we knew about kobe and then i got into basketball when i wanted to start watching um like first i started watching the current game but kobe wasn't there then i'm going back and i'm watching and the game that i find myself going back and watching the most is 2010 game seven and even though he didn't play well i i'll stand on the fact i don't think he played well that game but when he jumped up on that scorer's table and he got his fifth ring and you see the reaction, you see the emotion, that's a moment I'm like, I wish I got to experience that at the time. He passed Shaq, five rings to four. He put everything he had into that series, into everything he'd done for LA. And I, I seen it. Like you could, I felt like I was there with him, watching the game 13 years later. And I felt like I was there. So like, that's my favorite. I, I watched that game. Like every couple months, I watch that game. Like that's how much that game resonates with me. So my favorite yeah. moment is just that that 2010 game. So that's where. Damn, bro. That's where I'm at. Big Ox Bob. I know this may be hard for you, my brother. <laughs> but <laughs> why are you smiling your face? Cause we talk we, we talk about the uh, great Kobe Bryant. You know why? <laughs> did, I, did I get your favorite Kobe Bryant moment against the other 29 teams in the NBA? My my favorite Kobe Bryant moment has nothing to do with on the court his career. My favorite Kobe Bryant moment was what he was doing for basketball after his after his uh playing days. It was everything he was doing for the women's game, how he was impacting the young ladies coming up and bringing a light to to their game. I respected that out of Kobe, and I, I wish he would have got a little more time to do that. I, he didn't complete the mission, but he got it on a good he got it got it going in a good start. So that's what I appreciate from Kobe. I mean, all the the Talking about what he did on the court, there's too many examples. There, there can't be one favorite Kobe Bryant moment. We can go from that that, that game winner that we was watching live in, what was that, 09 when he hit that over D-Wade. That shit pissed me off. Everything Kobe Bryant did pissed me off, and I loved it. But after, <laughs> after what – I just loved it. Like, that's I'm just a competitor, so I love that shit, bro. Kobe was, Kobe was really the guy. But um, what he did after his playing days, it's uh, – I think he was, bro. I, th I think he was on the way to doing something major, and uh, what he was doing for the women's game was, it was dope, bro. It was dope. It's been four years, right? Today yeah. is four years. Four years today. I just hate like, that. I, I, I just hate that we got robbed, yo. It was so much more that was there. It was so mm -hmm. much more that was that we were supposed to see, and we got robbed of that, yo. Like the the, the Hall of Fame in twenty twenty wasn't supposed to be a commemoration. He was supposed to be there for that, man. 20 years, he was supposed to be there to see that. His baby going to college and, and playing college basketball, he's supposed to be there to see that, yo. I hate that, man. I, that, that shit bothers me, man. I, I, I know that, that that life gets tricky sometimes, but this kind of stuff right here, man, that, that really bothers me, man, because this dude should have been here to see this stuff. 
like him being loved like he's loved. He should have been here to hear this, man. He should not be gone. It's some bullshit, yo. It is. He should be here for this. He not, and it sucks. I'm sorry, yo. I, I agree with you. Yeah, Chino. I'm not going to lie. I, I, I agree with you. Yo, Ticket, uh, what is your favorite Kobe moment of all time? I think we lost him. We had him. And Ron, what you think? What you think, Ron Ticket has been sitting here this whole time? Mm -hmm. Um, Yes. Yeah, Ticket tick emotional right now. Um, he, he read all of us. That's why he's not talking. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess I'll just fill in for Ticket since um he's not here. I got two. I got two. Yep. Um, both are younger Kobe moments. I personally like the younger Kobe more than the older Kobe. I'm not gonna say who's better or anything like that. I just it was something about the fro Kobe that just resonated with me. Number eight Kobe, but um, two moments. One was the Pacers NBA Finals. Shaq gets in foul trouble. Mm. Kobe's like, y'all don't never fear. The Mamba is here. Goes out, hits that shot. Does the, you know, to the bench, to Phil Jackson, to everybody in the arena, to, to all Lakers nation. Does the, you know, calm down, chill. I, I got this. Y'all might not know yet because I'm young and I haven't, I haven't, you know, reached the levels that I was soon to reach. But I'm I'm here to put the world on notice that I got this. And so that was just, it, it, it was a dope moment in hindsight going back and looking at, looking at it. Like how Mars, how Mars said that he, he goes back to that 2010. I go back to a lot of younger Kobe moments and it was dope to see him basically know ahead of time who he was and you could you could see it in his or in his mannerisms and just in the things he would do like who in their right minds looks off prime shack kobe bryant she, does. Want, she wants this all you <laughs> no. gotta go get it off the backboard yo, who says stuff like that with prime yo that <laughs> mars that's like i don't know anybody like, in the league go, like, going and play, getting drafted man. today and in three years, yeah, Kevin Durant or I was going to say Jokic in three years or or Giannis in three years, getting drafted today and in three years being like, no, nah, this this is my team. Like, yes, Jokic, I'm playing with you, but this is my team. But anyways, that, that was one of my favorite moments. And then also uh, the Kings, obviously, you know, I'm sorry, Ox, but Kobe, Kobe hit that crossover at the top of the key, goes in. Obviously, they just make a make a crazy comeback. Oh no, that wasn't the Kings. That was uh yeah, the that was the Blazers. Yeah. yeah. Um Game crossover seven. goes in, throw, throws it up to the moon to Shaq. Shaq goes and gets it. Uh Shaq comes down court, point pointing to the uh to the rafters in uh in Staples Center. That was a classic moment. So those, those are two of my favorite Kobe moments. You know, you know why that you know what that why that almost I'm not gonna lie, I was more pissed at that. Uh, the the port the Portland, because I need wow. I need this I need the Scotty to get seven rings. <laughs> I need the Scotty hey, to get another. What, what kind of conversation we having, Big Ox? If they if if they because I think oh y'all oh y'all would hate me y'all would oh. hate me <laughs> oh y'all would hate me if Scotty had seven. <laughs> oh my goodness, man! I would oh, I would man. rather Scotty have he, seven. He, I would rather Scotty have seven than us have one. Hmm. The the, the London the London Olympics was also pretty cool because even though I wasn't paying attention to basketball at that time, we had LeBron, Kobe, KD, all in London playing. We uh, I watched some of those games, and I enjoyed that too. So shout out to Kobe for going there. At, how old was he at that time? 34, 33. So shout out to him for that too. Um, bro, that, that's probably what started the game in London. Really, I know a lot of people were infatuated with that 2012 olympic team because a lot of people started right. a lot of people started picking up basketball after that and kobe was a big part of that so yeah fellas i could talk about kobe all day and i would love to talk about kobe all day um but i'm gonna bring it back to the beginning of the show uh we talked about a couple things but we kind of just breezed over it uh first thing i do want to do is because the title of the show is lebron and Giannis our team captains for the NBA All-Star game. So I'm going to put this on the screen so you can see the Eastern Conference and the Western Conference final or starters for the All-Star game. Uh, we have Giannis, who's obviously the captain. Then we got Joel Embiid, Jason Tatum, Tyrese Halliburton, Damian Lillard. Western Conference starters, LeBron James, Kevin Durant, Nikola Jokic, Luka Doncic, and SGA. Um before I ask, is there any discrepancies in the in the Western Conference? I do want to ask you guys a question that I asked earlier, and I want to hear from everybody. 
who should be the Eastern Conference backcourt if you had to choose? Who's earned it today? Dub, I'm going to start with you. Um, I'm going to go with – I don't think Dame should be there at all, actually. I am actually <laughs> do agree with that. I think he should be over Maxi though. Uh, but uh, Jalen Brunson should be starting. It should be Tyrese and Jalen Brunson. I think Brunson's been playing phenomenal. Um, I guess if Trey was playing – uh, more recently lately, I think he could probably get that spot too. But uh, yeah, Jalen Brunson probably should be over him. And the fact that, I mean, it was a tied vote uh, in terms of the media vote. And the, the fans only- sold. The fans are the ones who the sold fans. for Jalen Brunson. Yeah. Yeah. The, the fans is the reason why uh, Damian Lillard. Come on, won fans. There. How you going to want to do it at the start yeah, of your vote? Yeah. Vote? I, I, I hear all going? these Knicks fans complaining, but apparently they did all this yelling and didn't want to put in votes. What's so. y'all doing? You want Facts. to do it as a start and you don't Yo, that, the, me, that, the media that voted sense, from the players voted from. So uh, yeah, yeah. That, does that not make sense to you guys? Damian Lillard no. is miles more popular than, than Jalen Brunson. Jalen Brunson and New, well, it makes sense for me. New York and New York is the second most populated state in the eastern in the eastern um part of the it's country. The, so the second think, biggest city in the country. You think they'd be saying. doing that? You think they'd be doing that job? Pennsylvania, I mean, I guess maybe they might have some love for New York over there. So you think they would do that job, but they're not. <laughs> I mean, it's, 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 it's people. It's people in New York that like Dame more than Jalen Brunson. Yes, they're, not, hey, they're not doing their job. That's the problem. Right. They want to complain. The players had him number three. The media had him number two. The fans are the ones who sold him. So, mm-hmm. I mean, let's let's keep it real though. Like Dame, Dame, you know, Dame and uh, Giannis, you know, they sacrificed their coach. So, <laughs> if you, if I'll just say that if you made, didn't, made, if you the didn't vote for Jalen Brunson, if you, as anyone in the chat, anyone watching this, whoever in the world. If you didn't vote for Jalen Brunson, don't complain that he didn't make it. Because the reason he didn't make it is fine. So if you didn't vote for him, don't complain. Because it's on you. <laughs> don't complain. I'm not about to hear you complain. He should have made it, and then you didn't vote for him. Uh, that's your business. <laughs> All right, y'all. Right. Before, before we move on and get uh, everybody else's uh, backcourt, I do want to say that this is the perfect time to like the video if you haven't liked the video. Um, and if you haven't liked the video, why haven't you liked the video? Just just mm-hmm. i'm just curious send it in the comment section why you haven't liked the video i would like to hear all of you guys's reasonings all um 1500 reasonings because well no 1600 because it's only two, 200 people have liked the video and it's 1600 people watching the video right now so go ahead spam why you haven't liked the video but go to www.playerschoicemerch.com and get your merch right now we got a bunch of hot items in there they'll look good on you and your significant other and your kids and your mom and your dad all of that good stuff uh, also you can join us on playback tv we are locked and loaded and going crazy on there right now um we do have a freestyle party set for tonight a freestyle party with dub and jd i didn't know y'all had bars but in case what? you didn't know at 3 p.m today a dub and jd party. will be freestyling on i can't uh, rap playback tv oh well too bad just signed up for open mic so no uh you better, you, hey you, you better go watch some Eminem videos write, or i could write a rap i can't nah, nah, just it's freestyle, freestyle party. it's not a, it's not a, it's not a real i've written party. raps before for people party. that's the crazy part you want to you want to rap one right now so you do so you do so you do so you the writer dog so you're not the dude that's that's singing the song you're the one producing the hits that's you I'm yeah a, I'm i could write song. i could write, write I, I, I remember back not. in my high school it was very popular to do diss tracks and i was writing diss tracks for some people and what to say <laughs> And, and, they would be, and then they will be putting it on SoundCloud and stuff. I'll be like, yeah, I wrote that one. <laughs> uh, we have a $25 super chat. And in case you, you haven't tuned in in a while or you don't know what's going on, $10 super chats are to answer the question right now. Unfortunately, we haven't been able to answer no $10 super chats because there's a thing as $25 super chats to change the topic. And whenever a $25 super chat hits the screen, we must change the topic immediately, which Pip named Slickback is displaying at the current moment by sending through this $25 super chat saying, look, I live in New York. I'm 28. When Mm -hmm. I went to high school, nobody was a Knicks fan. The Knicks fan base is mostly old heads who remember the 90s and senior citizens who remember the 70s. Most of my generation are Lakers and Heat fans. Okay, first wow, of all, stop right there. Pimp, that's There's not true. Season, yeah. Okay, first of all, that's not true because you're 28 years old. That means that 10 years ago, when you was in high school, you was a senior. So the year before that, which was the 12-13 season, so the, was, and the 11-12 season when you was in the 10th grade, y'all had Carmelo Anthony. So it was plenty of Knicks fans. So that's not true. That is not true. Plenty of Knicks mm-hmm. fans, and the Knicks was in the playoffs. 
So excuse, that's not true. It was, excuse, it, was, it, was definitely, it was definitely Nick fans. And on top of that, even today, in five years ago, when the Knicks was fifth, when, when the Knicks was five straight 50 loss seasons, they still were ninth in the league, eighth in the league in attendance. They still were selling out. So people go watch the Knicks. The Nick New York is a Nick town. Even with Kyrie Irving, James Harden, and Kevin Durant in Brooklyn, New York is a Nick town, 100%. So don't hand me that. The reality is, Mars is correct. The fans sold. You wanted them, you had an opportunity to get them, and you didn't. It's not simple. All right. Mm -hmm. Um, And another thing, too, right quick. Uh, we got a bunch of new members that just joined the party. Let's go ahead and give them a good shout-out. Sir Charles likes churros. All yes, right, he does. Charles, that, that's what's up. Yo, you see that picture? Um, all right, Tyler Woods <laughs> just joined the party, huh? Right. MF on. just joined the party. It's your sports talk, MIXXX Jr. Just joined the chat. Uh, welcome to the party. Just joined the party. So, welcome to the party, funny man, Eddie Wilson, Wizardo. Stage, Dirt TV. Um, not only did he just join the party, but he came in and turned the whole the whole party up. He he bought everybody he, around he, the he drinks. He bought the ball. He bought yeah, the this ball. Should be, but, this should be. Um, the, this should be. This should be the title. <laughs> yes, sir. He the title the should be the panel sponsored by Dirt TV. Yes, sir. <laughs> Oh, and lo and behold, a little late to the party, but they still made it in before the doors closed. Ballers Intel just joined the party. So shout out to everybody that's that, that that's mm -hmm. new to the crew. Appreciate you guys for, for chiming in. Um, I would rather have nobody else than you guys. With that being said, backcourts, Ox, who you got? Who would you start in the East? <laughs> uh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> De'Aaron De Fox isn't in the East Sox. But Jalen Brown, right? but Jalen Brown is. You oh, know what that just said? Hey, I mean, I hey, mean, remember when you was in school and the teacher pit and the teacher called on you? It was like, oh, she talking to me. I'm sorry. Yeah, sure, that's that's a hundred percent Ox. Sure, that's a thousand percent Ox. <laughs> exactly yeah. Now, chill, chill. I got I got me ADHD. Like, I, if I'm not engaged, I'll be like, uh, <laughs> like focus, big Ox. Be like, be like that us. all my life. But us, I would fella. start Tyrese Halliburton and Jalen Brown. Reese and Jalen Brown. All right. Hey, honestly, I'm surprised Jalen Brown's not getting a little more love. What? You're not? Jalen Brown. You surprised? Yeah. Look, yeah. look, see, look, let, 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 let Dub show you why. What? Because casuals are haters. They don't Jaylen understand. They don't, Brown, they, don't, they, don't, they don't understand. They don't understand the real hooper when they see one, right? They don't understand the real hooper when they see one. I see Dub, a fake hooper. I don't know what you're talking about. Now, here's the thing, though. I, I, I you know, I'm a, I, I grew up heavily invested in the 2000s, 90s, baby. But grew up, grew up in the 2000s was when I was able to really like start putting everything together. A yeah. lot of my core memories. I remember when, if your team was at the top of the East or the top of the West or the top of the NBA, you're getting a couple starters. Like the 04 Pistons, mm -hmm. they started four players. Well, I think time, I think it's because times are changing. People are. I don't remember, but I think times are changing. People are just looking at basketball differently, and rightfully Tom, so. I don't Tom, think times because... are changing. Dub, you got you guys run the world now. It's the participation trophy generation. It's not participate. No participation trophy is literally if you're just on a winning team, you're obligated to get an all star spot. That's literally participation. No, that's no, that's 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 the winners. The winners. The no, winners you're you're on a team that's the good, war. so then you get an the all winners, spot. That's yeah, participation you're good, trophy you're right good. there. No, that's no. not what that means. If you know yes, the does. winners, the winners get the the victors get the spoils of war. No, if okay? if I if I am that's, on that's if the I, week the week the week, do not, the week do not get celebrated. <laughs> If I'm a Tyrese Halliburton and I'm balling out on the Pacers by myself, Jalen Brown don't bro. deserve an all-star spot over me. What are we talking about? No. Fellas, fellas. fellas Participation uh, trophies is a motherfucker. Your, your mm. Highness Charles apparently doesn't want to talk about participation trophies. Let's do he it. wants to talk about New York and mm -hmm. L.A. fan bases. Let's he said, it. I'm from New York and I'm a Laker fan. The yep. Knicks have won two playoff series in the last 25 yep. years. I don't know what Chill is talking about, loyal mm -hmm. fan bases. I'm yep. 18. I'm 18, and them two years of mellow success wasn't enough to sell me. Like Pimp said, 
old heads. <laughs> wasn't enough to sell you as a as a as a high school. It wasn't enough to sell you as a high school kid. Just so you know, during that time when Amari Stoudemire, when he was talking about him as a league MVP in 2010, in 2010, they was talking about him as the league MVP. The Knicks were on TV. When we fast forward to again, when they was losing 50 straight games, 50 when they was losing 50 games every year for five straight years, the New York Knicks was in the top 10 every year. Every year they was in the top 10 in attendance. Meanwhile, the Brooklyn Nets, who got a got a 15, 16,000 seat arena, was at the bottom of the league in attendance. Nobody in New York cared about Brooklyn. New York was a Nick town. You are the, you are in the minority of being a Nick fan. And you keep saying that you as a high school kid were there and you was a Laker fan. But I, I just want to let you know, my man, these old heads, they still around. That's the problem. It ain't like these old heads are gone. These old heads are still around. These old heads are still here. These old heads are still right here. filling up. These old heads are still filling up Madison Square Garden. These old heads are still watching the Knicks on TV, which would explain why the Knicks are as popular as they are still. Just because you being a, just because you don't like the Lakers living in living on the East Coast, it's plenty of people in in New York City alone who are Nick fans. Plenty. Just because you aren't, there's plenty of people who are. There is a lot of uh, going to games and stuff more frequently. There's a lot of uh, the older people watching games and actually enjoying them more, way more than younger fans. Right. I'm not going to hold right. you. So, shout out to the old heads. I'm not going to lie. I actually do enjoy the uh, seeing them have a good time. Mars. I think that's what Pimp said. I think Pimp said, smoke some. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> smoke. I thought he said real something. You know what? Mars. You know what I'm saying? I Mars. thought he said. <laughs> uh, <laughs> If well, you didn't want to, what's you? I was going to ask you a question, Mars, but Your Highness Charles is not done with chill. Uh, Your Highness Charles said, chill. What are you arguing? It's it's mostly kids who are voting for the All Star vote. Laughing emojis. You are blaming really? Knicks fans. You are you are blaming Knicks fans. Them old heads aren't the ones voting. It's kids, and most people are play are player fans now. Yes, I hit a nerve. No, you didn't, because I don't care about the Knicks. I ain't been to a Nick game since they had you in the '85. <laughs> Let's be clear about that right now. I, I couldn't care less about the New York Knicks, but to say that it's only old heads, which it is, I mean, which I'm not saying that it's only old heads, but it's plenty of young people in New York who like the Knicks. There's a dude in the chat who is a diehard Knicks fan. He talks about Jalen Brunson all the time. He's 29 years old, so it's plenty of people. There's plenty of young people that like the New York Knicks. So in terms of hitting the nerve. I couldn't care less about the New York Knicks, my man. Sure, they, don't, they, don't, they don't consider 29 young. They, Sir they Charles is cooking you. I'm not going to lie. Um, my God. Well, Dub, I don't know if your stuff is cooking you. Your stays cooking me, man. I don't this know if he is helping you. Well, he's helping you, but I don't know if it's <laughs> in, a, in a disrespectful way or not. But your oh. said, this is solely contributions for Dub's LED lights and some I posters. I appreciate it. Still low-key got it. a nice background with the paintings. Not going to lie, though. Bro, I need that whole 50 ball, man. You know what? This weekend, next week, I'll have something. He's well, been on my Dub, case all week long. Here's the thing, Dub. <laughs> I, Dub. You know, I would never cheat you to beat you. You know, that's not really my style. Uh -huh. YouTube's going to take yes, about yes, 40%. Would, we'll knock it off. Yes, and then it has to come Yeah, that 50, that 50 really is like 35. Yeah, my bank account is going to – well, my bank. You know, I don't – my my bank, they be tripping. These Washington banks, if you're – if 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 you ever come to Washington, don't ever bank with Washington. Bank outside of Washington because they're going to take about 25% and then the rest mm -hmm. is going to get to you, Dub. Gross. That's, just, that's just not true. They don't do that. You that's not going on up this, there. This, this, the same, this the same got, man who hasn't that freed is, Almighty Lambus. Like, that that is real. Real. We already paid his bill. But we already this is the, the same man who hasn't freed mm. Almighty Lambus. We already so, paid his bill. Yeah, the the Lambos ain't in the streets? Why is he Y'all don't see that Lambo in the streets? still locked up? What's the problem, Ron? We already paid his bill. The Lambo should be in the streets. Why is he still in the? Why is he still no, in the? I told, you, yeah, I told you. I told you that was state time. He came out and the feds picked him up at the gate. Right? Right? What he <laughs> That's came insane. Out. El Federales. El Federales. Yo, I don't got this guy. The is is above my pay grade. The, Mars, you up. see this? Yeah. I mean, what? he's nuts. You Ooh, think anyone thought the Knicks could win the championship? Oh, okay. That's on you. Wow, oh. butter biscuits. That's crazy. But you want to read this up? Yeah, he was talking about the Knicks last episode on Open Gym. Chill. I'm a troll, by the way. I'm a Heat fan. Jalen Brunson leading to the championship. You really think I believe that ish? <laughs> <laughs> also, why you gave up on the Knicks then, Chill? What's your team, OG? My uncle, God rest his soul, my hero to this day. I wanted to be like my uncle. I was in the seventh grade. He calls me up. Uh, my mother tells me, your uncle's on the phone. 
hey man, I got a couple tickets to go see the Knicks. The Knicks just got Ewing. So I'm super hyped. Not just because they got Ewing, but I get to go hang with my uncle. Mm-hmm. And we go to Madison Square Garden, and you could basically get dub you from Jersey. From Jersey City to Madison Square Garden on a train is basically 15 minutes. I live, I literally live right on the outside of the river. So we get to Madison Square Garden, and we ain't sitting upstairs, Big Ox. We right there. We ain't like row 10. We right there. And the big fella comes running out. So I'm super, I'm with my uncle. I'm supercharged. The Knicks, Big Ox, when I tell you that this dude, this is a preseason game, by the way. This ain't even a regular season game. It's a preseason game. This dude got in the fight and got thrown out of the game. I ain't been to a Nick game since. <laughs> I ain't been to a damn Nick game since. So, that's not how I expected that to go, Chutan. Not at all. <laughs> that's fire, though. That's fire. That's that is fire. funny. That is, I bet you was mad as hell the whole time. I was hot. Back. Big fella, we came to see you. <laughs> <laughs> the hell? Yeah, I ain't been to a Nick game since. We're going since. Uh, <laughs> Mars. Starting Eastern Conference All Star backcourt, who should it be? I trust you. Um, this right, Mars. Not Jalen Brown, considering he's a front court player. So, <laughs> so let's get him at it. Yeah, he's a shooting guard to me. Well, he's not on the backcourt ballot. So that is right. I forgot about that. He plays the three next to Drew Holiday and Derek White in the backcourt. So not Jalen Brown. Um, I was. The politics say Tyrese Halliburton has to make it because, um, you know, Indiana. So Tyrese Halliburton, and then it would be between Jalen Brunson and Trey Young. But based on the Knicks' success, I think they should have a All star star. So I go Tyrese Halliburton and Jalen Brunson. That's my backcourt. Chill town? Uh, I had uh, Tyrese Halliburton and Donovan Mitchell in the backcourt. Um, mm. mm. What had what had been going on in Cleveland? I had I had Cleveland as a top three seed before the season started, and uh, just before they lost to Milwaukee a couple of nights ago, they was the hottest team in the league. Donovan Mitchell's having a career year again this year. He's averaging twenty eight a game, um, shooting one of his one of his highest field goal percentages of his career, and at the long ball line, shooting higher at the free throw line this year, uh, second in the league in steals. So I had him. I, I actually had him starting in the All Star game. Well, the three point shot is worse since his rookie year. But field goal percentage is mm-hmm. who's the one? Best. Donovan Mitchell. Donovan Mitchell, yeah. Right. Uh, he hasn't been hitting the three ball like he used to, but he's definitely um I think he's been playing well. Mm-hmm. I think, but he's gonna he's gonna get up out of there though. It's crazy. How are we gonna talk about Donovan Mitchell when he gets to another team? Mm-hmm. Yo, ticket. My bad, man. I had to holler at that honey that, that I was telling y'all about. Hey, it, it, it be, hey, sometimes ticket, if you want to keep it a bean ticket, sometimes you got to say something, yo. It be like that sometimes. You got to say something. Whether it's just, hey, I don't know what, I don't know what you're doing. I don't know what you're doing. Nah, don't lie. Don't lie. Don't lie, ticket. Those, those Kobe, those Kobe talks had you had you emotional too. I'm not gonna lie, I was fighting some tears over here, chill. I hate you, man. Dang. Man, yeah, ticket, so you got a new bank account? But I had um no nah, I had man I'm mad that Bob's supposed to be hooking me up man Bob got it Bob had a little tenderoni over there John I'm still thinking about her. <laughs> hey, think it Bob a fake hey, player? Bob, he not paying. He not passing you to rock. Yeah, is that man. what's really going on? What? Bob's selfish. Bob's selfish in the post, man. He don't pass out the post, Jim. <laughs> that is fact, Bob. You are selfish. I'm not gonna hold you. <laughs> wow. <laughs> And you are selfish. Hey, hold you are for sure Big, selfish. Hold, 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 hold. Hey, Ron, this is your man hey, now, Ron. Nah, that's, be, that's, Ron. One, that's one man. thing I ain't. That's one thing I've never been, is, been is, called. We've been waiting to the rim. Throw the ball up. Throw the ball up. Is I'm your man to holding out? <laughs> yo, yo, chill, Sam. I've never in my life by anybody been called selfish yeah. in that any aspect of the, of the world. It just happened four times in 10 seconds. I just yeah, want to make sure because I'm like, hold on, Big Ox. You can't be holding out on us, yo. Don't do that. No, no. Don't do that. Yo, um, ticket. I got two questions for you. First off, I would like to hear your Eastern Conference backcourt All Star Game starters, and then I got to hear your favorite Kobe moment. The same ones that's starting right now. So you got Dave starter? Yeah, because I mean, you talking about fan? Well, if because you got to include if you include the fandom. Dame still got a whole legion of fans, you know what I'm saying, from based off the career he built up. Yeah. And so, I mean, bro, listen, when you got that type of seniority, 
I think Jalen Brunson, if he do a little bit more in the playoffs, he'll end he'll, his his being in New York, mm-hmm. his uh popularity and stuff will rise even more. You know what I'm saying? I just think that game is pop. But if it was just me choosing basketball from this season, it, no question it would be it, it would be Howard Burton and it would be uh it would be Jalen Brunson. You know what I'm saying? That's that's without a question. Okay. So Halliburton should be starting. What about Kobe? No, I say yeah, he should be. Okay. Um, yeah. About, yeah. What did you say about everybody no, up I'm here? Saying, gave what did our you say about Kobe? Kobe? Yeah, everybody up here gave our favorite Kobe Bryant moment. Um, what is yours all time ticket? Um. It's so many. Huh? Yeah, it's, it's it's a gang of them. Oh no, no. man! Say it again. You going in and out? No, I, I think. Think about it, Phil. Mm-hmm. I think you got to think about that. One. I think Kobe. You there? Yeah, I'm here. I said, hold on one second, Ron. Hold on one second. All right, all right. Uh, Raw ticket is uh, collecting his thoughts. Dirt TV, right on perfect schedule timing, said, uh, after ticket finishes the Kobe story, I want to hear everybody's favorite undersized center of all time. Hmm. How tall is undersized? 6'9". So like Ben Wallace, Wes Unsold, and them, right? Mm-hmm. Ben Wallace. Yeah, What's I, can't go, what? I, I can't go low than I, I can't go past Ben Wallace. Well, Sunsell might be better offensively as a scorer. Oh, I was but, trolling. I think West Sunsell is not good at all. Yeah, but you were here of the 70s. We know that. If we're going off a of favorite, I'm going to say Bam on the bottom. I mean, R- R- Rookie Alperin Sangoon when he was still 6'9". Rookie Alperin. <laughs> now, now he likes 6'11", so I, I, he don't qualify, but Rookie Sangoon. I was thinking Lonzo Morning, but... Uh, was the last one really? He like he like he like six. He like six, uh, six ten, ten eleven. He was six, ten. Yeah. yeah, he was six ten. He he was a bit undersized though. I'm not yeah. gonna lie, especially in the era he played in. Yes, that's he was I think small. Yeah, was yeah, yeah. Lonzo's yeah. yeah. a good one, actually, a really good one. I changed it to Lonzo too. Chilton, how big? How big was Cornelius Williamson? Six eight, six seven. Mm-hmm. That's one. But he ain't played. I think he played the four though. Big nasty. That's what they called him. Yeah, yeah. I think I think he played the five. I think he played the five first. No, he played the four. Did he? he okay. Definitely played the four for y'all. All right, Ron. So okay. you asked yeah, me, Bill Russell. Ron, you asked me about Kobe. What you asked? Yeah, Ron, yeah. What you asked me about Kobe? Favorite Kobe moment of all time for Ticket. Oh, when he was waiting in the finals for LeBron James. <laughs> Someone <laughs> said you was gonna say that. <laughs> Someone in when the he was waiting in the finals for LeBron James. That. <laughs> and, he, and the man didn't show up. <laughs> I mean, LeBron was winning the regular season MVPs, and Kobe was winning finals MVPs. That was my favorite moment because I'm like, look, man, you're supposed to be about a, this drama. You're supposed to have the season, the season series record. We waiting for you in the finals. He ain't never show up. Dwight mm-hmm. Howard threw a monkey wrench in that, yo. You, Dwight Howard. Right? Like, no, no. But I'm, I'm just I'm right. Gonna no, I'm I didn't hand, hand think you was actually gonna say that's crazy. Yeah, yeah. That's that's hold on. That's my favorite moment because that, that championship. <laughs> let me tell y'all. Let me tell y'all what that what that does though, Mars. What that what that would have did was that would have destroyed all narratives. Because if Kobe would have beat LeBron or LeBron would have beat Kobe, then there would be mm-hmm. no talks. That would have been no talks because they both were the leaders of their team at that time. There would have been no talks about if ands or buts. If if Kobe would have ran LeBron out of the finals, we wouldn't have had no conversation. If LeBron ran Kobe out, no conversation. Like how with the monkey wrench and all that. That's funny. Shout out to whoever cooled that in the chat because that's crazy. Man, they know what time it is with me, man. I don't play no games like that, man. Like I said, that that meant something to me, man, because LeBron was winning the regular season MVPs, but Kobe Bryant was going to the finals, and they said LeBron was going to be in the finals with him. So I'm thinking we really going to find out who the, who the who the king is now. They had a whole campaign sure. ticket. They had a whole campaign. Remember Nike, whole campaign rolled, man. remember Nike rolled out that campaign with the Muppets and all of that? That's what there was, you know, there was babysitting and stuff. Man, the White House would do a monkey wrench and all of that. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, but chill. Uh, I don't yeah. think chill. I don't think people give Kobe enough credit. And I'm gonna say I'm gonna say this to you, Chill. The reason why I have disdain for people and how they talk down about Kobe 
Kobe was never afforded some of the things that some of the other great players were afforded, like Kevin Durant, some of these guys. When they wanted to give him Chris Paul in his prime, think about Chris Paul at that time. That was a prime CP3 at that time uh, that Kobe was going to get in that deal. Baby Stern put the kibosh on that. He was too. like, hell no. Maybe two. David Stern put the kibosh yeah, on that. Yeah, see, and like, that's the problem. No. That's what I'm saying. That <laughs> Right, that's what, that's what I'm – but, hey, chill. That's what I'm saying, though. So that's why I'm like, you know. And then if Kobe never tore his Achilles – Kobe Bryant would have still been running because Kobe was destroying dudes that year. That year, yep. Kobe was destroying cats, and I thought they would have beat the Spurs that year. I thought Kobe and Dwight would have beat the Spurs that year in the playoffs. I think Kobe and mm-hmm. Dwight would have made a run in the playoffs that year. I think Kobe was determined. But the, when he tore his Achilles, that was it. Like, it was no comeback mm-hmm. for him, and that was just the end of his career, man. That changed the, no, that no. Changed the course of – Kobe could have been a top five caliber player for a good three or four now, more now, years. Now, in defense, now in defense of this, yeah. I, I will say this – I'm sorry, Miles. No, 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 in, in, in defense of David Stern, we got to remember the time, Big Ox. And at that time, the NBA had owned the New Orleans that that, that team down in New Orleans, right? So if we trade, they are they are already aren't very good. So now if we trade Chris Paul to Los Angeles, that completely devalues the team, throws us in the cellar. And remember, this is a business. So if they end up trading him. What we could get for him when he on the crew as opposed to when he not, it's not even close. Mm. So David right. Stern was like, hell no, we ain't doing that. No. You know, you know Chilton, that's, that's crazy because that's not the first time David Stern did that because you can't have a championship coming to Sacramento. He put the kibosh on that too. <laughs> so, he, you know what I'm saying? He gave one and he took it away. Hold on, Bob. Who did he block for going to Sacramento? Like he talking about the rest. The, 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 the Larry O'Brien trophy. That's what from the no, I'm saying, no, I'm saying, but what free agent? I'm saying, what what trade did they stop uh, Sacramento from getting? Y'all stopped y'all sales, Bob. All them years y'all had teams. I, I'm, bro, not, I'm not talking about that. That's not what I'm talking. About. That's that's not that's not at all what I'm talking about. That's not at all. Well, what I'm, I'm saying, talking what about. am I doing? No, no, I'm with you. Anybody, now. Any, any, about any, free, though, any free any free any free agent that any free agent that doesn't come to Sacramento is doing. What about the other years, Bob? That's irrelevant. That's that's irrelevant. That's irrelevant. Any, any no, 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 but what about that? Agent, Why y'all ain't win the other year? Listen, listen, listen. Any Why did y'all win that, the other years? Because, because, I mean, because we had a bad franchise. That's why. But anybody, any free agent that doesn't come to Sacramento, they just ain't never been to Sacramento. They, they don't know. Ticket ain't talking about them other years. Ticket talking about what you talking about. Big Ox, hold on. Big Ox not going to get away with that. Uh, no. But y'all had about? the same team for like three or four years. Yeah, y'all had, hold on, y'all had a monster, y'all had a monster squad, and y'all had a yeah. Team. And Pesa, but Pesa, Pesa, was, Pesa was at his Pesa was at his peak when we got robbed. So that's what I'm saying. No, I'm saying no, no, no. But I'm still saying, but y'all still had y'all had a deep, y'all had a great starting lineup and a deep bench. Y'all play, y'all right, had right. that team together for like three or four years. Why didn't y'all win? That's bro, we didn't win because the other team, other teams beat us. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the no, time you, we got robbed. No, but you talking about David. But you're talking about one I'm, year. I'm, talk, I'm, talk, I'm, I'm talking about, about one year. Years. Yes, I'm talking. I'm talking about one year. I'm talking about one year. That's just that's just not how it works, Tick. That's just not how it works. I'm talking, I'm talking about David Stern. David Stern. David Stern. David Stern. David Stern. I'm not really sure. I'm not really sure. I'm trying to figure it out. I'm trying to figure it out. I'm trying to figure it out right now, Morris. What I'm saying is, David Stern put the kibosh on that. That's what I'm saying. 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 That's what I'm my man, New Orleans, uh, Chris Paul. New Orleans, New Orleans, New Orleans to lose my man, Chris Paul. Yeah, just like that, he he put the kibosh on us winning the championship because Larry O'Brien can't reside in Sacramento. It's bad for business. What did he have what, to do what, with what, that, Big Ox? That's what, what that, that's the point the ticket tried to make. What everything. did David Stern have to do with that? Everything. everything. Okay. Okay. What I'm okay. saying though is David David Stern in, so, but by, by by trying to protect the, the 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 Charlotte Hornets or the New Orleans Hornets at the time yeah. by by trying to do that. He Ron. actually robbed the league. Bob is a liar. Hold on, hold on, Ron. Bob is a liar, and and I'm, he's a liar. He's a liar. Why am I liar? And you and you going ahead? Okay, Bob. You guys had a oh chance to win God. the series, and Patrick Swayman shot an air ball wide open. The greatest three point shooter in the game at that time shot a th- air ball wide. Oh open. my God! Yo, Damn ticket, Ox. ticket. So I think Ox has a message for you. Are you? So that ever was crazy. That that ever was, was crazy. The, hold on, hold on, Ron. I don't care about the message. Pedro Stoyakovich was one of the best three-point shooters, if not the best in the world at that time. Am I right, Chilltail? Ticket, why are you talking about Pedro? Why are you talking about how Chris Webber, five points in the second half and the overtime in game chill. seven? And, 
and chill. The man had a what chill. You couldn't Ron, get a I don't got. I don't got to sit. I don't got to sit here and stand for this abuse, Ron. I don't got to stand for this abuse. I'm gonna tell you why. Bob, you a big guy. I'm gonna tell you why. Bob, you a low down dirty liar. Bob, you a liar. Out of big ass with this shit, bro. You a liar, Bob. And I'm gonna tell you why. All right, guys, me out. Storm me out. Relax. Relax. I was hey, 11. Hey, 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 ticket. I was 11. <laughs> I'm, ticket. I'm traumatized. I was 11 years old, when man. When Pager had that shot, Bob, 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 when Pager had that shot, I thought we was going home. When, when I saw, hey, get down. When I saw how wide open Pager was, I said, yo, we going home. We lose this game. Look like somebody moved the basket. I couldn't believe he missed that three so bad. He hooked that. Somebody moved the basket. Bro. Yeah, that that elbow was crazy. I thought we going home, and this man should have been talking to the ref. That is true. You can't. <laughs> Yo, you, you, guys, just, man, you, guys you can't go play the same dude, Ron. It's the same dude. This is sick of this. Because, Ron, it's the same dude who heard Vlade Divac say, quote, if we have home court advantage, we win in the series. He said that. He's on record saying that. You got game seven in your building. You got game seven in your building, and you come up short. Kobe it should have never, it should have never came. It should have never came to that. It should have never came to that. Worst thing about Bob. <laughs> <laughs> what's, the worst, wait, what's the worst? Wait, what's the worst thing about me, Tiki? What's the worst thing about me? <laughs> you a liar? <laughs> oh my god! Bro. Get the big ass to this, yo. Oh, before I go. Oh my god! You lagging? You lagging? You lagging, yeah, Tiki? You lagging? Yeah, you know the Ticket winning and out. But that being said, man, Big Ox, he, he, keep, he keeps up with this nonsense. You got game seven on your home floor. You go into overtime with the Lakers in game seven. Your starting two guard is on record saying, quote, I have never been more scared in my life. Get the Kings mm. out of here, yo. Get the Kings out that of here. These dudes do not want to win. That shouldn't have been a game seven. They don't want to win. They don't. They do not want to win. I don't. I don't care. I don't care about what people say in interviews and tabloids. That don't mean nothing to me. I'm talking about on the court. It should have never even came to that. We had that. We had that sold up. Oh my. Hey, hey. Big Wombo. Hey, hey, hey. Pass that. You know I will chill. Come thank, on. thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. I got to. I got to go get some fresh air real quick. My, my, my dude walking. In, my, my dude walking <laughs> in the door. Yes, sir. Pass, pass that. I'm sick nah, of Ox. Chill. You see what Charlie did? I'm sick of Ox. I'm sick of Ox with this nonsense. I'm tired of him. I'm tired of him. I was there. I heard Vlade Divac tell us if we have home court advantage, we win in the series. We had Game Seven on your home floor. Yeah, Ma, sure. It shouldn't have came to Game Seven, but it did. It did. And you got yeah, Game sure. Seven on your home floor. You had the best record in the league at home. Give me a break, man. Nah, Them dudes yeah, was yeah. not with the drama. They wasn't. Y'all didn't have to do that. <laughs> Y'all did, did, did not have to do my man. Stick Ox. Ox. <laughs> Had it with Ox. Them damn kings. Bob left. <laughs> yeah, y'all. Y'all ran my. You needed some fresh air, man. Yeah, y'all destroyed him. That's that was crazy. sad. That's mm. insane. Um, but I guess right now is the perfect time to go ahead and. Go over some of the games that happened last night in the association. Uh, let me go oh ahead and throw this God. on the screen. Um, what happened last night? Let's see, let's see, let's see. It was From such a top. bad night. Uh, yeah, it was. I'm not gonna lie. The Utah Jazz beat the Washington Wizards. Uh, as you can see, Lori Marketing had 29, 7, and 5. Kyle Kuzma also had a pretty good game. He had 26, 6, and 5. Um, the Indiana Pacers. Hey, beat who called that, Rod? The Philadelphia hey. 76ers. Dub did call it, and we were watching. We was watching it on playback last night. Um, the Pacers basically handled the Sixers from the beginning of this game to the end. Joel Embiid did what he does, got 30 points. But Pascal Siakam had a triple double, 26, 13, and 10, and the Pacers smoked the Sixers. The, the actual 12 point win wasn't indicative of how much they really controlled this game from start to finish. Also, keeping it pushing, the defending champions. Denver Nuggets got, got killed. Molly Wops. Oh Molly Wops. 122 to 84 by the New York Knicks. Shout out the Knicks. They are smoking hot right now. Uh, OG Ananobi got off. Julius Randle, as you can see, had 17 and 7, and they worked the Nuggets. Also, um, this trend is continuing to go. The Boston <clears throat> Celtics, yes, the top seeded Boston Celtics worked, and I mean absolutely worked, the Miami Heat. 143 to 110. Um, it was Terry Rozier's first game, and it didn't really second, go as second expected. Game. Second, second game. Oh, second. Oh, yeah. Well, okay. Well, yeah, he 
he got handled in his second game. Um, Tyler Hero had 19, but it wasn't enough. Uh, Jason Tatum had 26, 8, and 4. Shout out to Celtics. Uh, the Minnesota Timberwolves barely squeaked by the Brooklyn Nets. Carl Anthony Towns had 27 and 10. Cam Thomas, that's his name, right, Dub? Cam Thomas? Yeah, and you know Thomas. what? Thomas. Cam Thomas, baby. Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> say it with me, chill. say it with me, chill. Camp Thomas, Camp Thomas, yes, sir. <laughs> he had 25 and 69. Camp Thomas, that's him. yes, sir. Uh, the Sacramento Kings beat the Golden State Warriors 134 to 133, barely got him. Harrison Barnes with a big game <laughs> had 39 points. Um, Steph Curry had 33, and also. Jonathan Kaminga had another big game. He's starting to break out. Shout out, Jonathan Kaminga. Um, and last but certainly not least, the Los Angeles Lakers got to 500 at 23 and 23 on the season by beating the Chicago Bulls 141 to 132. LeBron James had 25 and 12. And DeMar DeRozan had 32 and 10. Uh, is there any of these games that any of you guys want to speak on from last night? I was... um. My heart was broken watching the uh, Boston Celtics just utterly do whatever they wanted against the Miami Heat. But we will be better. We will grind and strive to be great. There's an adjustment period that needs to be had. And we're going to look ourselves in the mirror and we're going to look at ourselves after this five-game winning streak. And, like, we don't like ourselves. But when we beat and defeat the New York Knicks the next game, we will be, we will be back to the agenda. And what's the agenda? Championship. Mm, heat culture. Championship culture. Heat got culture. you. Got you. D Damo, was it anything that happened yesterday in particular that you want to speak on? Um, Another Nets loss, another <laughs> uh, disappointing loss. Uh, had a lot of high hopes for that team. Um, I think a lot of us did going into the season. Uh, on paper, their defense, I, in terms of, how good defensively that team would be. I mean, we could blame the fact that Ben Simmons is pulling another Ben Simmons and just isn't there for why their defense isn't as good as people thought it would be on paper going into the season. But I, I'm, I'm going to speak for myself. Then I had higher hopes for this team. I thought they would have looked better. Um, shout out the Wizards. Another day, another Kuzma masterclass of showing why he's the only player that's not a rookie that's worth caring about on that team. <laughs> Respect Marvin Bagley. Yes, yo, he's been playing uh, good. Dude. No, dude. Yes. Respect uh, Marvin Bagley. No, uh, no. Yes. Not doing Respect that. Marvin Bagley. Uh, not doing that. Not, not Marvin, yet. Not Marvin yet. Bagley, the second most valuable asset on the team. Hey, well, it's, as soon as Kuzma gets actually, traded, he'll he'll be starting and he'll get his rightful minutes that he deserves. Marvin Bagley, the only reason I watch Wizards games. Is he? Yeah. I thought you were low on Marvin Bagley, Mars. I didn't like the fit in Detroit because they had 17 bigs, but Washington played Marvin Bagley as many minutes as possible because Marvin Mar Bagley's good. Okay. Just I didn't even know you were a Marvin Bagley fan, and I didn't, I didn't know you were watching Wizards games. <laughs> I should watch Only since games? Marvin Bagley got there have I started watching them more. But, <laughs> yeah, Marvin yeah I haven't been watching Wizards games like that Marvin, either. Mar Marvin Bagley, Balao Marvin Bagley, Big Balao. maybe Denny Evdia, mm -hmm. the only players worth keeping on the roster. Daniel Gafford, too, but he's too good to be on the team right now. So he should be free to a good team. But those three, the only people left. left um... I was thinking about this. Um, is Kyle Kuzma the modern-day Rudy Gay? Like a worse version? Knew, of no, 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 no. Absolutely no. not, Doug. You're not I was doing just that. asking. <laughs> no, you're not doing that, Doug. I was just no asking. Uh -uh. I was just asking. Uh-uh. You're not doing that. I knew, you, I knew where you was going with that because he actually won. Yes, he did do that. He actually won as a as a, as 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 a key piece on a championship team. It's not like he gets off the crew and all of a sudden they're at the top of the league like Rudy Gay is. I know how you feel about Rudy Gay, dog. So no, you know what? I, I I very much enjoy Rudy Gay. Like I loved watching him play, mm -hmm. but it was just so sad that anytime he was on a crew, that crew was terrible every mm -hmm. single time. Besides the Spurs, so Kyle Kuzma is better than Rudy Gay. That's what we're saying. We you speak French? Who's we? Yeah. He said he won a chip. He said he won. 
Okay. And but who are we? That was that's what I was like. You know what I'm saying? Oh. You want chill? Do you want chill? Chill, 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 say. Whoa, 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 whoa. We're not doing that. No. Oh, 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 he said he won a chip, though, when it matters, right? Right, he did. He did win a chip when it matters. However, that does not mean he's a better player. What we're talking about, no, nah, what you're saying. Mm. That, that, that's what, that, that's what <laughs> Dub is talking about. And Dub's <laughs> not, whole logic has always been with Rudy Gay. Once Rudy Gay get off the crew, they just go to the, they, they, they're on a trajectory upward. When he gets off the crew, that's what happens with them. Now, Kyle Kuzma, who's a who's a, a very valuable role player, very valuable role player. He's not. I don't think he's in the same talent ca- talent class as Rudy Gobert. No, I'm not. I'm not Rudy Gobert. I'm sorry, Rudy Gay. Rudy Gay. I'm not. I, I'm not saying that at all. No. But what I okay. am saying is, these two dudes are not the same. No. Uh-huh. Can I ask you this? Air, air, sorry, oh, sorry, Doug. My bad. My bad. No, you, you gotta got hold it, you that question. Um, everybody unleashed has into the chat. And sent through a $25 super chat saying Chill has talked about this before, but Jacques Vaughn might be one of the worst coaches in the NBA. The net scheme makes zero sense. And why is he bringing his best score off the bench? What team in the NBA does that? Well, the that Wizards was just... bring Marvin Bagley off the bench. Well, they just got him. That's number one. They, <laughs> they just, just got him. Got him yeah, they just got him. <laughs> now nah, he started and now he's on the bench. He number started two, like the number first two. two games and now he's on the bench. So Damo, you just brought it up about Ben Simmons. I think he's coming back Monday. I, I think his target date is Monday to come back, if I'm not mistaken. And with mm-hmm. coming back Monday, I equate the Ben Simmons situation to what was going on in Chicago. With him getting hurt, that threw a monkey wrench in everything that they was doing in Brooklyn. Because I think that team was predicated on being a defensive-minded team. They weren't going to be a team that's running up the score. with It, it was going to be Ben Simmons, Mikael Bridges, Nick Claxton. That was going to be the foundation of your teams in terms of defense. You could have your best scorer coming off the bench. That could happen. But you got to turn them loose, though. And I don't do you have to turn them loose. You got to keep them out there. He can't just be on the floor for 10 minutes here and then five minutes here. If you're going to turn, if, if, if your best scorer is coming off the bench, when he comes in the game, turn him loose. Stop acting like he's this distributor or stop acting like he's a playmaker in terms of distributing and, and doing other things like that. He's a bucket getter. Let him be that. Can I ask? Uh- well, where and my fault, Dub. I'll let you go. Just wrap this guy. Ask you still ain't changed that ring where, light, bro. God, leave. No, I didn't change the ring light. Jesus. Um, <laughs> were we Clean wrong glasses. about Mikhail Bridges? Oh, no, I was right. I was right. Marvin Everyone was else, right. he thought he was gonna I was be good. Wrong. I was yeah, right. I everyone was wrong, you. bro. I'm not I gonna tried lie. to tell you guys he wasn't what you thought he was gonna be. He's what well, wait, he wait, is. Wait, wait a minute, 20 point per game scorer. Okay. He's better about. without the ball in his hands. <laughs> and now you try and make him a number one guy, you're going to see worse defense, and he still can't pass, and he still can't dribble. So he just looks worse. I told you guys this was what was going to happen. And I've been Man. perfectly accurate. And, and, where, and, where, did, and where did this so whole, where, where, where did this narrative come from? It came from when he first got over there. You seen 25, you seen 28, you seen 27. Uh-oh, we got our scorer. Like, hey, hey, ho, hang on, relax. This isn't who Mikael Bridges is. He's an elite perimeter defender who's great in transition, who can knock down an open shot, but he is not the dude you're drawing it up for. That's not his game. No. With that being that said, though, Mikael still is playing good. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, he's not trash. Let's, yeah. let's, let's, let's not, let's not make it de- seem his like his defense Jesus. is plummeted, but um, that's besides the point. And uh, also, I think Ben Simmons helps him, though. I think Ben Simmons directly helps him, not only on the defensive end, but I think Ben Simmons gets him more shots Gets him more transition looks, <laughs> and I, I, I think he just benefits Mikael Bridges a lot by being on the. Shout board. out to Leaf. He said all of them are role players. That's exactly what they all are. Besides yeah. Cam Thomas, probably has the most upside. Um, Offense, but yeah, for sure. But I think the thing with because I think the the super chat was made with Jack Vaughn. When I watch his Nets crew, it's like such a lack of guidance. Like when I watch that crew, like I just don't think like everyone knows like what they're what they need to do i don't think there's really a set plan of who they're gonna feed through who they're gonna be sometimes you have spencer didn't when he go crazy cam thomas go crazy and then you ice him out the game the next one or not look to him and it's just a lack of vision that the nets have right now i think they could be better with a better coach and i don't think jack bond has done a, a good job of utilizing this team right right here but if they to, had to be hardy they'd be a good team I genuinely to, believe that. To be fair, though, like, let, let's be honest. Like, Jack Vaughn became part of his crew when it was, like, KD and Kyrie on the crew. So, like, I don't. to be fair and play his devil's advocate, I don't think he was looking to be in a position of nah, building mm-mm, up young talent. Mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. No. The only, I I, the only reason I can't hear that 
is because I the people who are sympathizing with Steven Silas said the same thing about him in Houston. There we go. He okay. meant to have okay. James Harden, and he got thrown into. I don't care. He's my bad. bad. So I can't give him <laughs> okay. that leeway. Steven Silas didn't get that leeway from me. So sorry, oh, not bad. I can Mars. understand it. I can't give it to him because I'm not giving that to Steven Silas. I can't. Mars, Mars you like you like go ahead, Damo. Mars, oh, no, you like, uh, you go. go ahead. Mars, Mars, you like Will Hardy in terms of schemes. What do you what do you like? Will, what do you like about Will Hardy on this Denver on this uh, Brooklyn crew better than what Jacques Vaughn is doing? Um, because with Will Hardy, I've seen him be able to use an off ball scorer who isn't great putting the ball on the floor and isn't a great playmaker in Larry Markin and put him in positions to be successful with a lot more off ball action. The stagger screens they run, fantastic. Although I will say they do have many better passes than the Nets do. So this is all yes, assuming Ben Simmons comes. Yes, they do. But bring Ben Simmons back. You have Will Hardy on the team, so you can have Ben We're Simmons. assuming Ben Simmons is playing. Yes. We're yes. assuming so ben Simmons bring is playing. Ben Simmons back. You have Ben Simmons initiating at the top. You have a bunch of stagger screens with Nick Claxton diving towards the rim. Uh, Mikel Bridges curling off screens. You have a guy like Cam Thomas who can really get into the teeth of the defense and create his own shot. You have a guy who can initiate high pick and roll action with Spencer Dinwiddie. I think the offense flows a lot more seamlessly if you have um, Will Hardy at the home. Because what Jacques Vaughn's so doing is just giving the ball to a guard, hoping they can collapse the defense and kick out. That's literally all he's doing. He has no idea how to initiate an offense, which maybe it's because he doesn't have a good guard. So I'm going to give him a teeny bit of leeway on that regard. But I think with Will Hardy, um, I think they're a much better offensive team. It sounds to me, Mars, like there's more action off the basketball. I'm, I'm going to I'm gonna still feature Cam Thomas, but I'm going to mm -hmm. feature him in an offense that's moving more as opposed to just giving him the basketball and getting out the way. Because that's, yes. that's the recipe for disaster. That's that's what it sounds like you sell. If you have more action without the ball, Mikel Bridges doesn't look, not bad, because Mikel Bridges looks fine. Right. But he looks a lot better if you have him off the ball more, because that's where he's at his best, off the ball. Coming off screens, curling off screens, elbow jump shots, catch and yep. shoot threes, one dribble pull up. That's where Mikel Bridges can do his thing. But when you have him trying to initiate, he's not very good. And that's oh. no fault of his own. That's because they got thrown into that role. So bring in Will Hardy, not bring him in, but hypothetically having Will Hardy, I think they're a better team. Now, I hope Jacques Vaughn never figures it out and they lose every game for the rest of the season. But I do think that would, they need it's a better coach like if they want to be good. It's not looking yeah. like you figuring it out. <coughs> Fellas. Um, no, the, the first one. Put the first one, not that one, but the one before that. Yeah, What's yeah. That read the, yeah. yeah, that one, that, that one right there. Uh, let's get, let's now, get to this. Now, I tried to tell y'all, Almighty Lambo was free in these streets. <laughs> Fresh off bail straight out of jail. All right. Um, welcome back, Almighty. You you back on the streets. He sent through a super chat and he said, I just got home from my bed in the PC slammer. Free the guys, Nick the Quick in YAMS. L Warriors, L No Nose Curry, L Chill Town, and L Dubonair. So L me, right? Uh, even though you I'm the one, with, the one cent right? I'm, the I'm, 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 I'm help putting up the bell. Not only am I help putting up the bell, I'm also in the lobby pounding on the desk. Get my man out, and it's L me. All right. So the next time you get in, the, next time you find yourself in the clink, don't call me. How about that? Don't call Yo, me. I, I'm here to tell y'all like that. That Almighty doesn't stand a chance. He's going look. He's going to be back in these streets for a week, and he's going straight back to jail. Right. I promise you. Hey, and his bail next time? Mm -hmm. Oh, man. I, I, I just I, I don't got no faith in him. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, yeah. already. It's, it's good It's good to see that Lambo running back, hey, driving back mm -hmm. through the streets, though. But he's driving around like stink meaner. So it's like, I'm telling you, he, he doesn't stand a chance. Also, uh, Wyatt MS, for some reason, your lawyer found something in your case that was unethical uh -oh. and you got released too without having to pay bail for some reason why is back on the street so that's crazy hey you guys hide your kids hide your wives get in get get back in the house by curfew because he's about to be out here running crazy and reckless but welcome back home and on that note we got more super chats we got more super chats but i do want to talk about the western conference finals or western conference all-star starters and we will yep. get to that but as of right now let's start from the top uh sauce man said ticket would have made a boston boston, boston frauds boston. video if we lost by 30 but boston beat miami by 30 bro on mute we frauds but our stand but our standard higher than all he just, he just higher. doesn't believe in miami now that's why you're not like he, oh, he just, yeah. he just if you lose to a team he doesn't believe in, now he doesn't believe in you. 
That's how it was. He doesn't suddenly believe Yo, in Yo, I didn't beat that. He now I doesn't believe in that. Miami. All that Jimmy Butler has done, all yeah, that Jimmy Butler has done, no turns way. out because Kyle Lowry was there. Oh my Jimmy Butler's God. success in the playoffs because Kyle Lowry was there. So now they lose to Boston. He doesn't believe in Miami now. He's not gonna I Boston didn't peep that. Take her away from Miami. Wait, wait, but he believes in the Knicks. You ain't get that oh, until man, like, uh, 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 until <laughs> until Boston blows them out. By yeah, the way. and then until if Boston, Boston destroyed blows the Knicks, out. all of a sudden, yeah, and Julius Randle. The, the crazy I part is OG the, Ananobi, blah blah blah. The crazy yeah. part is chill. Like with me and my gambling mind, they're probably gonna win that last game that they play each other. So <laughs> expect that ticket stream. I told y'all. I told y'all what's gonna happen. To, oh, bro, I guarantee. You. When do they play? What day is that? Ooh, I'm gonna the, check the, it. The Boston, Knicks in Boston yeah. or. Knicks in Boston. Knicks in Boston. Do, they play one more time this year, right? I'll, I'll look. I'll look real quick. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. They play on February 24th. Ron, I guarantee you that's on a that's on a Saturday. Monday will come around. This man, Chill Town, will tell us all. I was right. I told you about this. I told you about that. Ticket. Oh, ticket. My bad. My bad, Chill Town. <laughs> my bad. My bad, Chill Town. <laughs> I can't wait. That's so funny, bro. I, 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 real, I know you got to get back to Super Chats. I just wanted to discuss real quickly about Anthony Edwards shooting under 30% in the fourth quarter in the last four games. I, anyway, mm. keep, keep, keep going. It's just a bad stretch. Uh, I don't think that's indicative to who AE is. Come on. Mm-hmm. I, I don't yeah, want to everyone, has everyone has bad stretches. But the, the Timberwolves offense is concerning. But yeah, uh, I think that Did Mike Conley play that last game? game? He did play. Yeah. Against oh, um, the Nets, even had that excuse. Damn, Didn't even so that's leeway. why I can't. That's why I was giving them some leeway, but after this recent outing, I'm telling you believe, guys, I can't believe in that offense. I can't. I, I'm telling you guys, this stretch of the season, these 28 games. Go, go. If you guys go do some homework, because I did some homework from the, the right, right around Christmas, like around maybe the 22nd or the 23rd of December, to the All Star break. Go look at the standings. And check those teams' records of these last 27 games. And the teams that have been over 500, look for those teams at the end of the season to be representing the East and the Western Conference in the, in the, in the Conference Championship and in the NBA Finals. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> wait. Watch the, now. Wait, 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 27 a, games this, being this is, an above 500 team. This is the dog days Boy. of the season. The season is the season is broken up into three stretches. You got the okay. first 27 games where mm-hmm. you got teams trying to figure out who they are. You okay. got teams trying to figure out rotations, figure out who their guys are, figure out what they're doing offensively and defensively. Then you got from this, then you got from around Christmas to the the the, the, the all-star break, or the trade deadline. Yeah, the, I'm sorry, the all-star break, Moss. Those 27 games, teams are dealing with injuries. Teams are dealing with trades. Teams are dealing with schemes that they're still trying to figure out. These are the the, the monotony of the NBA. These are the okay. dog days of the season. These 27 games. And then you got the last 28 games of the season. Guys are getting healthy. Teams are starting to gel. Defenses are getting better. Teams are rolling. These 20, the, the, the middle 27 games, this is the toughest part. And you, if whatever teams, if you look at the, the standings and the teams at the top of the league, if you look at what their record is, Above 500, those are the teams that are that are going to end up being in the Eastern Conference and in the Western Conference. Chill. So chill. hold on, though. I'm not done. Real go quick. ahead, go ahead, go ahead. So, so the, the, the Lakers, for example, are, are, the Lakers are an anomaly. So last year they finished one game above 500 during this stretch. They, they, they were one team. And the Cavs, I believe it was in, in 17, 18, they finished with a losing record during this stretch. Everybody else. From from 10 years, I went back 10 years, Mars. Everybody else, the Spurs in 13, 14, 10 games over 500. Oklahoma City, uh, I think they were 11 games over 500 during this stretch in the Western Conference Championship. So when 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 I look at all of these teams, this stretch of season in the middle of this stretch of season right here, this is a very important part of the season on how good these teams are going to be going forward. My whole my whole thing is that's cool. Perfect. I think everything you said is probably facts, right? Applies to like probably eight teams that's going to be above a 500 record. So it's like all those eight teams is going to be rep- like, it's only what that, that doesn't, to me, it doesn't mean anything when if you're a good team, I'm expecting to go 500 within this stretch regardless. So that's why I'm like, like, why are we even bringing this up? Why is this even? Let's see if I remember correctly. 
Let me, let me take a look mm, at my You're going to say there's only, there was only like 30 teams that didn't. Yeah. You're going to be cooked. I'm out of no, 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 no. Break it, break he, it, break he, it, break he, it, break it. He about to bring the Joe, Joe said he did his research. So yeah. oh, I got to believe it. <laughs> I got to so, see this. Because so, I would assume that teams, let's say for this stretch of games, right. you're going to have a good hand of teams right. by eight. I'll, I'll bet on it. Eight to right. ten teams that's above right. a 500 record. Right. But with those teams being above 500, none of these teams were doing what these teams were doing. So, for example, in 13-14 with the Oklahoma City Thunder, it were 13 games over 500. It was in the Western Conference Championship that year. San Antonio, it was nine games over 500. They won 10. They won nine out of 10 games during this stretch. They was in the Western Conference Championship that year. How about the 14-15 uh, Golden State Warriors? They won 13 out of 14 during this stretch. They won the NBA Championship that year. No other team did that except them. The Houston Rockets, they won seven out of ten. Uh, the Toronto Raptors, they was in the NBA, they was in the in the Eastern Conference Championship. Mm -hmm. They won nineteen straight games during this stretch. So if you can look you at look the teams, can you look at how many teams also was an above five hundred record throughout that time? Like where the I Clippers would, an above five hundred record? I don't. But but see, I think this is where in I'm listening to chill. Some of the teams I, that dominate that stretch. That's yeah, what that's saying. what I'm saying. That's, that's what it is. It's the team that. Oh, that, you're saying that. Say, if they, if it's dominate, yeah. that's a that's different. You're saying that's above the, 500, no, and above 500 point. to me that's, is no, like. No, no, I'm 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 sorry if I explain that wrong. That's exactly okay. What I'm okay. About. Teams who dominate because this okay. stretch of the season, the 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 dog that days. That makes sense. These teams that dominate this stretch of the season. Look for them to be at the end of the season. Either. That's a, in, in, in Rockets, okay. That's a bad sign for my Houston Rockets because we okay. Okay, Joe. Well, you put it like that. That's yes. fine. You said above five hundred, and I'm like, well, like that's that, that, not... that widens the scope when I say above five hundred. Yeah. There's a bunch of Way. teams above five hundred. No, exactly. When we're talking okay. about dominating the stretch, which is what I mean, because that's those are the those are the the, the 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 when I did the research, with the exception of Cleveland, and mm -hmm. the exception of Cleveland in seventeen eighteen, and uh, the Lakers last year, because Lakers only finished the game over five hundred, and actually mm -hmm. in Cleveland. That year, when and they went to both the those teams had extreme trades that happened after that stretch too, because 1718 was turmoil in Cleveland. Right. Then they made the trades, and the last right. year's Lakers also made the trades. Correct. So they're kind of exceptions to the rule. Right. But wasn't that last year's Lakers team? Wasn't they? They were one of the more dominant teams in that 27 game stretch, though, right? Like no, they, the last they were dominant in the last 27. Uh, not the so about from this point, the middle like 27. That mid so that you got the oh, first so 27 he, games yeah, yeah. Okay, where okay, teams okay. are figuring he's themselves out, the middle, and the last 27 where everyone's gearing up for the end. But the middle yeah. 27 where it's hard to get up every night and you're grinding through mm -hmm. games. That's where you really see which what teams are. About. Oh, okay. So yeah, that's yeah, the, yeah. okay. So uh, yeah. I that's a grind, the baby. The mid-season grind, bro. The middle, the middle. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you show you show that toughness, that grit and grind, man. That's some stuff right there, bro. I actually like that. Yeah. Mm. All right, fellas. Jay got game sent through a super I chat and said, Knicks. You're good. You're good. You're good. It's, it's fun. I understand it now. Jay said, Knicks, they are 11 and 2 since OG trade. It's just sad that we are bringing up the Knicks record before the trade and not after. They clearly a better team. Do better, Dub and Mars. <laughs> four, 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 think you four, guys um, three, three and two against good teams in that time. Yeah. Three and two against I, good teams. I guess I, I hear you on that, that part of the record, Mars, but I thought that you. Work because I, I felt like this was a great trade for the Knicks. I felt like getting OG it's, actually put the, put them in the game, but so that's all I was wondering. Like you, you feel that way too, or or, or what? yeah, I, I think it's a good trade for them. I think it makes them better. But yeah, I, I think so too. They've beat they beat Minnesota, Philly, and Denver since mm -hmm. they've got OG, Minnesota. and then they lost they lost to Dallas and they lost to Orlando, and they're yeah, the only good okay. teams they played in that time. They played five right. good teams. They're three and two in that time. Um, I'm not lose to Miami. I mean, technically, they lost to Indiana when OG got traded there, but he didn't play that game. So technically, mm -hmm. they're three and three since the OG trade. But I'm not going to count that game because that's fine. Mm -hmm. So they're three and two in that time. So mm -hmm. the eleven and two, they're eight to zero against bad teams again. They beat bad teams. I give them credit for that. That's how you get high seeds in the playoffs. But um, when the playoffs come around and there's no more bad teams around, the fact that they can't beat good teams consistently is a concern for me. That's what I'm saying. That's it's a it's a it's a matchup ball, thing for them for ball, sure. For Sure. Mars, I believe we call that fool's gold. I got tricked in the past, too. Yes, I did. The 2009 Cleveland Cavaliers tricked me. Yes, they did. 100%. They was fool's gold. 100% mm. they were. Chilltown, yeah. I want to let you I want to let you know, Chilltown. I walked, no, LeBron fooled you. I walked, fool I walked, I walked it off. I walked it off. You good now, big ops? You straight? I, I, clear, I cleared my head. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Okay. I, I, I forgive you and ticket for that. That, yeah, that page just felt going on repeat as he was. Yeah, working. yeah. I, I, you know, I expect I expect more from you, Mars and Doug. <laughs> even, even you, even you, to a certain extent, Ron. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I said they should have never gone to game seven. I was kind of on your yeah, side, but I'm just saying that shot was crazy. Yeah, that was crazy. Y'all ain't had to do that, but it's all good though. I'm back full of fact. What up, Dama? 
What's cracking? Ox. You What's up? Your ribs good? Yeah, By yeah. Way, Mom, but you know what? I want oh, no, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead, big ox. Go ahead. You good. You good. Well, I'm, I'm changing the subject. You know what I'm saying? So I don't want to come off there. I was gonna uh, say I, I was thinking I was thinking about the about the Knicks, and mm -hmm. I understand the, the, the losing record, but I, yeah. I do appreciate their defense. Five of the last oh, six games that they played, they've held teams under under 100 points. So that that just means beating the teams that you're supposed to be. And I don't really hold them beating, and I dub I already said this. You know, mm -hmm. Denver losing by 40 last night. Like I said, the, the example I gave in the past, I watched on a Sunday afternoon, I watched the Bulls get smoked in 1998 by the Lakers. On a Sunday afternoon, the Lakers beat them by 25. They ended up winning the NBA championship. I watched the Dallas Mavericks, who the, the Miami Heat ended up playing in the finals in 2006, beat them by 40. They ended up winning the NBA championship. I watched the 17 Warriors on opening night get smoked by the San Antonio Spurs by, the Spurs by 30. They ended up winning the NBA championship. So getting smoked in the season, that really – that doesn't hold a lot of weight with me. It's just how you recover. And teams have right. recovered in the past. So Let right. me ask you this, Chill, because you talk about the teams that they held under 100 points, right? Yep. So you got the Denver Nuggets. Mm -hmm. Are the Houston Rockets away moving you? Are the Houston Rockets moving me? I do. Uh, yeah. The, they're, the they're, offense? They're a playoff team. On the, on the road? Well, no, no, no. We, we were. We had hopes, and we've been terrible recently. They yeah, have and, and 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 I'd like to I'd like to think that the Knicks and defense on the road, has something. you can't shoot threes, so I mean, that's not, and I'd like mean. to I'd like to think that the, the the Knicks defense has something to do with that. I would like to think that because I think shoot threes on the road, regardless, on the road because, they get cooked because because Boston didn't hold them to under hundred and they were home. So I mean, I don't know. Orlando's offense moving you. Their big man is the biggest issue with, with, with Orlando with Nick. Mm. I don't have a problem with their with, with, with as much with their offense. They they, no, they we're good, we're good. We don't have to go on this road. Yeah, we don't have to Yeah, Leap Diggy is confused with something that one of you guys said. I'm not exactly sure, but he's not feeling it. But on to Yersta. Yersta said, chill from yesterday. My point was they had a role for KP. Hence, he dragged 30 point per game with Luca. And has a great game too. But even in the bubble, he played six games, then injured in game three, played 43 games next season. It's hard to build a role for a dude who wasn't healthy when you were expecting him to be a co star. And low key, it's about to be the same with Kyrie injuries and playing inconsistently. Well, like, did they have a role for him or did, or did they not have a role for him? Which one is it? He was injured, they had a role for him, but it's hard to build a role for him. Which, which one is it? Did they have a role for him or not? Because he only played three games in the bubble. I mean, in the playoffs, he did. He only played three games in the bubble, and he just seemed out of sorts with 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 Dallas. I, 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 I that's what I saw. All right, uh, back to the top. Air Buddy Unleashed said, "Bro, what's with the Jalen Brunson disrespect?" Ron, tell them to name me fifteen players better than him. You can't. He's a superstar. He's yeah. better than Halley, Dame, Mitch. No, New York. We on top. You know Y'all bad. I'm not gonna lie. I'm very invested in uh, the Jalen versus Trey Young uh, uh, conversations. I'm not gonna hold you. I'm actually very I mean, invested. I, it, it, is Trey Young becoming like the new? Who was it? Yes, before, Mars. Right? Yes, I mean, he there, is. Who was used to be someone who was a gatekeeper to like a conversation. You said Kobe. You said Kobe, right? Well, Kobe is like the top 10. For some reason, anytime someone elevates into all-time status, are they better than Kobe? It happens so, with your kids. So, Mars, it's Kobe. right. It's almost like UFC fighters, right? UFC fighters, you have a guy, you have guys where it's like, once you beat this guy, it was um like Uriah, who was it? Uriah Faber or... It was some Derek fighters, Brunson. Right? Derek Brunson in the middle. Derek way. Brunson, right? Where they're good. They're really good. But Not they're never going to be on that, on, that, on that championship level, right? <laughs> so... So once you get past that guy, now you're on like a top top tier of play. Uh, and you think fighter. Trey is the gatekeeper to that tier for playing? I players. think Trey. I think it's probably Trey. Yeah, probably Trey. Yeah. Well, wouldn't he be Mars because so John Morant is below that tier, right? Yes, yeah, they're right there with each other. Let me say John Morant's the gatekeeper. Don't say Trey. They're both. Trey. They both are. They both no, are. Trey bad injury. So, I, okay. I thought De'Aaron was the gatekeeper. Damn. De'Aaron is above Trey, I believe. No, De'Aaron's better is right he? now. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. De'Aaron's been, been, been cooking this year. Oh, my God. Oh, no, no, no. Not saying he has been. I don't tell us that. Cooking. Don't but, tell hey, <laughs> And get this. When Jay, because I, I talked to Ron about this last night. When Jalen Brunson went against Miami, he didn't drop 15 points. 
Yeah, he I heard you say that on the playback. I, I, I tapped in and heard that. I was like, okay, yeah, that, I thought you was trolling, but I guess not. That's that's a cooking, no, no, Mars. No, no, no. I mean, what, what are we gonna say? That's a cooking right there. Who? What offensive players he has on this guy? He had a, a pandemic Julius over there. So he's the most too. He's got another All Star. What? Pandemic. No, 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 no. That's not an All Star in the postseason. Who's other All Star? That's not an All Star in the postseason. Who's other All Star that Trey? Julius is not an All Star in the postseason, Ron. Let's be real. Who's the other All Star? Julius is not an All Star in the postseason, Ron. When you're when you're game planning, when you're game planning, you're game planning. They keep it one on one. What are you talking about? You said what? Julius. Yes. What about him? What about him? Thank you think they were giving him all star game plans? No, I they're, don't think they're so. Still, they're they're game planning around Julius Randle no matter what. Even if even if they're like, okay, it's the playoffs. Julius isn't going to play up to his normal standards. It's still they like, do game plan for him more than they game plan for DeAndre Hunter. Yes, that's fact. Oh yeah, my God, Mar, Mar, where we go? Don't do that, Jalen Brunson is the first name on that scouting report. No, he is absolutely. Mars, there's no way that you think that the scouting report they're disregarding him because that's the. I'm not. I think they're game planning for him more than anyone Trey Young had. That's why I said DeAndre Hunter. I just gave him a name, but they're game planning around Julius Randle more than anyone Trey Young had. So I agree with him there. And even they're not. They're not using all their resources to stop Julius Randle. To just free up Jalen Brunson. They're not doing it. I, I swear they don't. I mean, that's, that's, the, that's not a thing. That's not a that's thing why. that happens. So making that statement really means nothing. Like, of course they're not. They're not doing, yeah, they're not not doing that for anybody. It might right? be obvious. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm saying. It, it might be obvious, but that's what I'm saying. <laughs> and also, uh, on top of that, uh, go, go ahead, Damo. Go ahead, Damo. I, no, no, no. I, listen, I'm all. I mean, I'm not participating. But hey, listen. Argue about Jules Rand all you want. I, that's fine. Great TV. Um, my question was, I just didn't know that. Like is Trey, Ja, and De'Aaron not on the same tier as point guards? Am I, I the only one that thought that? I think Trey's better than both of them. Though. Start bitch I cut. think De'Aaron. I think. Hold, hold on, wait, 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 wait. Oh, I'm sorry, Doug. I'm sorry. We, go we, ahead, we go, go. That's, that. that's I, Canadian. We're getting, we're getting right back that's, to that. That's Canadian. Cut. Is twenty eight dollars Canadian? Twenty five US? Nope. No. Unfortunate. It's closer. It's closer to twenty three. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So, so as I was saying, um, dang, I forgot. Oh, oh yeah, De'Aaron, De'Aaron, Mars don't believe in the pull up threes from De'Aaron right now, right? But I still think he's better than Jar. Yeah, so I'll go trade De'Aaron yeah. Jar in that one. Me personally, De'Aaron right now, especially with I think he a uh, better defender out of the three, and the offense he's been able to give, especially this mm-hmm. season. I'm like nah, bro. And the postseason, I think in the postseason he was playing well against the Golden State Warriors, but he was battling injuries as well. I'm like nah, I, I'm I'm definitely fine with putting him over those guys, but it's not a crazy bar. Like I'm not saying he's on is a, there a gap? different level. Is there a gap? It's not a crazy. It's not. I a think crazy I bar. think Jaws below these guys personally. I, I but think he's how far is the gap? Like I'm not arguing who's Listen, better. I I know there's a player A is gonna be better player B and better player. I can't I think say it's bad. a tier. I, I like I don't. I think it's a. If you want to say Trey and Jaw is close, I mean Trey and De'Aaron is close. Cool, same tier. Cool. I think Jaw is in the next group. I don't think he's with those guys. Uh, so you think he's a tier below? Okay. Yeah. And and you yeah. dudes talk to me all the time about better quote unquote basketball players. So if you're gonna talk about basketball players, if you're gonna talk about basketball players in terms of skill set. We got to talk about the matchup. De'Aaron Fox kicks Ja Morant's ass every time he see him. Every time he see him, he kicks his ass. I forgot you're a Dar- De'Aaron Fox guy. I completely I forgot am. about that, actually. That's true. I guess I'm a John Moran hater. I guess. I'm right there with you, Mars. <laughs> I, 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 John I, also, I also did think John Moran was going to turn Memphis season around, and then he got hurt, so that yeah. didn't unfold. But I, So I think he's good. I just think he – I don't think he's the playmaker either one of them are. De'Aaron Fox clears to me as a shooter, and he finishes around the rim better than John Moran, despite the highlights John Moran has. Mm-hmm. And he's a better defender than John Moran. And Trey Young is just so much more advanced as a playmaker, decision maker, and shooter that I have a hard time saying John Morant's better than even one of them. In my humble the thing is with the shooting, Mars, though, is like I hear it, but at the same point, if you're not able to like hit your shooting looks, like how valuable is there? Now, the gravity is there a thousand percent with Trey, yeah, right? I mean, that's like a huge portion of it for sure. But if he's not like capitalizing on it, and we got De'Aaron Fox where especially when he's so fast, bro, with his quickness. Like, he has gravity, too, and he's able to key in on his looks, too. I'm looking at it, like, especially this season, I'm like, bro, like, he's shooting great uh, from mid-range, from the three-point line. He gets to the rim. Uh, definitely a good facilitator. Trey Young's definitely way better than him, though. I'm not even going to playmaker and everything. But the defense right there that he has, I'm like, mm, 
I'm very comfortable Most saying they could be the same tier. Percentage between Trey and De'Aaron from three. Uh, so De'Aaron's time. 39. De'Aaron's shooting 39 and Trey's shooting 35, which is it. it and De'Aaron's shooting eight threes. Like it's not like he's not shooting threes. Yeah, and, and that's why that's why I say percentages can be deceived because I think Trey's shooting like nine. So the, if you look at it from a percentage standpoint, De'Aaron's shooting this on the similar volume versus right. Trey. Cool, but Ox might disagree with me. Teams still aren't fighting over De'Aaron Fox screens. They aren't. That's hey, fine. But, but more that's fun. fine. I mean, I, I, with, Trae, I, I, with Trae Young, yeah. they are still blitzing him in pick and roll. And that's why I said the gravity. That's the why gravity there, I hear you. And but that's no, why I said the gravity it's, there. It's too, but being able to key in on that, I, I give that to De'Aaron, though. It, I think the main I mean, is the he's defense. He's keying in on it 3% more with much less defensive attention outside on the perimeter. Because A, he's more dangerous driver, so you probably don't want to fight over the screen and give him a downhill look. But B is because you still like on the Sky report, it's probably you still not concede um pull up jump shots, but it's the lesser of two evils. With Trey yes. Young, you are blitzing him at the level of a screen because you don't mm -hmm. want him to shoot. So even if he's shooting a lower percentage, the value that shooting is bringing is still exponentially above De'Aaron Fox, even if De'Aaron Fox is shooting 39%. And that's why I'm like, the percentages might say De'Aaron Fox is doing this and it's bringing tremendous impact. Yeah. But what Trey Young is doing, even at a lower clip, it's still well, that's what I'm saying. The, that's what I'm saying. I'm not saying De'Aaron's like a better shooter, even on the same level. But the fact that he is having that gravity because of his downhill ability, mm -hmm. and he's at least able to capitalize with his uh, uh, looks that they're giving him, combined with the defense that he has, that's why if they're on the same tier, that's fine. But I think yeah, De'Aaron could be. Yeah. I think De'Aaron could be leading that tier mainly because. Like he's just he's playing very well this year, bro. And it's just like with his shooting, I didn't expect the shooting from him. And we include what he does in the postseason as well. I think, I think what he's been doing is just phenomenal. I think I'm gonna give him that edge. Yeah, I, I, I don't mind giving him the edge. The, I think where Darren separates himself is a defensive end when it comes to Trey Young. That's, that's, How that's good do you think De'Aaron is a, as a defender? I was I was saying that last year. I think De'Aaron's a very good defender. He the, the ball pressure he applies. He's it's just consistent ball pressure with De'Aaron. He'll pick you up. He's fast enough to pick you up high, like on this side of the three-point line. He can pick you up over there because he can catch you if you beat him. De'Aaron, I mean, De'Aaron's not always in the passing lanes on that part of the defense. Um, and De'Aaron will meet you up at the rim, too. Uh, he's not I, – I, I wouldn't say he's a crazy help defender, but on-ball pressure is very important to me. And when, you, when you're when you applying that type of ball pressure, it makes it hard to get the pass you want to. So I, I give him – either I give him the nod. I don't know. I don't know who's a, who he's a comp to, but I think he's one of the better point guard defenders. Though last year, last year I was trying to you know really push the agenda, so I was saying he was like top five point guard defenders. But, uh, you don't remember yeah. we had that argument and Mars yeah. you ran down all. Remember we went through all the because remember I was saying the same. Me and Ox were both saying that De'Aaron De'Aaron Fox is one of the better point guard defenders, and we said he's top five. You know, remember we went through every mm -hmm. starting point guard, or or and then it ended up turning into point guards that actually play a significant amount yeah well yeah and then i remember you saying tyrese halliburton wasn't a bad defender and then we got stuck <laughs> on that Give but tyrese remember tyrese well, tyrese he, wasn't that bad a defender though at first like especially he when was, he was with us when he was no, with this, us, is, this, this is, is when he was really on the defense. paces already this is when he was yeah. on the paces already and i remember yeah, so Ron, I'm, me I'm, and ron I'm, were I'm, arguing i was passionately having to argue that jamal murray was a better defender than Tyrese I remember. I, I remember that Mars, but he was he was it probably fresh, did he start from there. Probably I can't believe Mars. I can't believe there, Ron that you that you that you did that with Jamal Murray as a defender and Tyrese Halliburton as a defender. I couldn't believe you did that. You was wild. Once again, like 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 how Fox said though, when, <laughs> when, when 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 Tyrese was playing for the Kings, he actually was a good defender. He actually he was played a defense. really good defender. Now, now it, a couple things were. You know, say the same thing about like, Mikael Bridges. Mikael Bridges was a great defender in in, in Phoenix. He, he, he was, was, but they both got one thing in when this, common. When this argument, when this argument happened, though, Showtime, <laughs> he was he was fresh over there in Indiana. His defense right. even last year wasn't as bad as it is right now. So at so that he was point, going up I'm still, the yeah, I'm still, I'm still, I'm still going based off a little bit of reputation. Right. On top of that, I'm thinking, you know, you get beat sometimes. Sometimes you're sometimes looking at his build you know, too, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. He's big, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? He got long arms, you know what I'm saying? I'm, he's quick, so I'm thinking, okay, he's got he all the attributes more, to be yeah. a good defender, mm -hmm. and he was actually he actually was doing it in Sacramento. So yeah. that's what I'm going off of. As I think the focus today, changed. I'm not, though, I'm not talking about him on. I'm not talking about him on, on defense now, but I was. I think his focus did change. I still too, think he's a to top. More offense. You don't got to do it, though, right? Five point guard defender in the league. <laughs> yeah, but, top twenty five starting point guard defensively. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
Wait, 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 what the hell? If, you, if you open that up to backup point guards too, he might not even be top forty. Thirty, but but yeah, we have to move he's on. Better than Damon, like Trey. Right. That's my Dirt idea. TV said Damo. CJ said started? it before. Oh yeah, he is. Damo, you have said it before. But who are your top five most <laughs> unethical bucket getters of all time? Oh, I'm definitely Ooh. interested in this. Who 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 are the guys most that you are unethical. over? Unethical. <laughs> unethical. This is, fire. This is oh, fire. all time. Oh yeah, this, this, is this, this, this is this is so easy. One for me. I'm just going for me. And my from the top, Harden. Damo. From the top, number one, James Harden. Most from the top, prime James Harden. <laughs> prime James Harden was the one Loving. of the most unethical Love. SOPs ever. <laughs> Uh, so I would say prime James Harden definitely up there. I'm not gonna lie to you, Joel and B for me, he's definitely number two. Definitely an unethical guy. Uh unethical bucket. See, if you would have said unethical players, I'd have never throw some guys in there, but uh, buckets, just buckets. buckets. Here, just unethical buckets. I, I see free throw merchants. Right. I gotta really see free throw merchants. The, the ethics conversation. I'm about to be the biggest hater if you ask me who's the most unethical bucket. Go throw. ahead, throw some in, throw some in, throw some in, Mars. Throw some in Moses alone. The most Ooh. unethical bucket guy I've ever seen. Moses, go look at his free right. throw numbers Ooh. and see how many of them were just putbacks too. Unethical buckets. Unethical putbacks buckets. a good bucket, Mars. That's a good bucket. Not when it's your own miss. No. It's yes, not. especially when it's your own miss. No. Un not especially, buckets. not especially. Unethical buckets. I'm going to have I'm, 10 I'm, free I'm, throws no, no, no. and 7 offensive rebounds. Unethical buckets. Yeah, see, no, 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 no. Mars, you what? I was doing the ethics conversation based on free throws. Moss, what's the difference between me being, I don't know, 6'10 and shooting a shot and knowing I can get around a guy to get closer to the basket to clean it up as opposed to me using my size and backing <laughs> a big guy down? What's the difference? We're talking about – see, we're not talking about the impact. I'm not arguing the impact of his scoring. We're okay. talking about the ethics. It's not ethical to <laughs> miss on mm. purpose to get your rebounds and put it back again. That's Talk not about ethical. It. Ethical how, is – How are you missing – why are you saying miss on purpose, though, Moss? No, he's done that. Wait. Moses did do Moses it. Malone, so, Moses Malone. Moses was shooting shots. All I can do is say watch him. All I can do is say watch him. He's missing on purpose. Moses, he's not Moses even was trying to get the rim. To he's hitting the parts he of was. the backboard so he can come back to him in a more yeah. favorable position. Yeah. Moses That's was unethical. That. I don't care. I'm not saying it's not impactful. We're talking about the ethics of it. It's unethical to miss shots on Wouldn't purpose, get rebounds on putbacks, Wouldn't and then it's also unethical smart, to get rebounds and wait for someone no, no, to hit your arm. We can't and say James Harden draws fouls is unethical I'm not, I'm not and then not call it bad. smart. I'm not yeah. saying it's bad because mm. I'm also James Harden, extremely unethical. He was also the most mm. unstoppable isolation player in the league for like four years. So being effective and being good is different to being unethical. I can admit something's unethical and not say right. it wasn't impactful. Moses Malone was definitely impactful and it was definitely smart. But you right. can't tell me missing on purpose, drawing as many fouls as possible on every offensive rebound isn't ethical. That's unethical. I don't care. He's one of the most unethical maybe scorers I've ever seen. Maybe I don't understand. What so that there's that. Yeah, but it works. Maybe, and I give him yeah. credit for it working. But it's maybe, unethical. I don't maybe, care. maybe Damo got to clue me in on, on, on the ethics. Maybe I, I need to understand exactly what ethics means. I, I, maybe, I'm, maybe I'm a little... A little in the dark. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie. Looking at it right now, and I'm just looking at guys this season. I'm not gonna go deep with it. Oral if Giannis, principles if Giannis, that govern a person's okay. behavior or the conducting of an activity. If Giannis was a better free throw shooter, he'll be one of the most unethical hoopers right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you know what? No, he is unethical. I don't care what anyone says. Oh, don't it's start it, bro. No, 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 He charges every time. The only reason they don't give Giannis six offensive fouls a game is because they can't. It's like the same way it was impossible to referee Shaq. Because he's committing yeah. offensive fouls two times every quarter, and they can't call it every time. So sometimes they call it a block, out. sometimes they call it a charge, sometimes they just call it a no call. But he's lowering his shoulder. He's into putting his head down and going to damn near that. every time. Every single one of them is an offensive real foul, quick. but they just can't call it. So real that real is unethical. Quick. That's for sure. Real quick, real quick, real quick. Somebody in chat just yawning, hella question marks. I look at league leaders in free throw attempts a game. Obviously, number one is number two on my list, Joel Embiid. Right below him. The Giannis only two the players court. shooting more than 10 free throws a game. Only two. Joel and Giannis. Joel shooting 88% from free throw. Giannis shooting 67. If Giannis was shooting better from the free throw line, y'all oh, would man. see how what no, no, no. the The attempts, nah, it don't matter. No, no, it don't matter, matter to Lamo. 
You could say it's unethical because he's getting to the line 10 times by lowering his shoulder and just bulldozing everybody. No, I'm not hearing this. He does get fouled. Jimmy Butler is also unethical. You're looking at the wrong unethical part. You're looking at the wrong unethical part. No, that's the right one. It's the right one. You're seeing it as unethical because of the way he's getting to the line. When I'm saying it's unethical, it's about when you're finishing the light, the, the night with 35 points and you go back and you made 17 free throws. That was an unethical 35 points, my guy. What are we talking about? When you when a guy has 40 points, Yo. but he had 15 from the line, unethical. So 40. you're telling me the most like epic- Kevin Durant, yeah. the most yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> okay, okay. Okay, so can we can we, that can was we exactly all acknowledge well how ass. unethical Jimmy Butler is? He is very an unethical bus bucket getter. Honestly, it is. Extremely. It's actually destruct. This it's actually terrible to see. The only <laughs> reason he doesn't get thrown in this conversation because he doesn't average enough points. But yeah. when you average in twenty two and nine of them or eight of them are free throws, unethical. He fishes for fouls all, all the time. Cool. All Trey, the time. Trey, Trey Young, another unethical one. Trey Young, definitely. Shea is a Shay Shay getting there was an unethical game. bucket. He's approaching unethical conversations. I'm not going to lie. For and sure I love so who's the? the right, so let me turn it around. Who's the most ethical bucket getters right now? Oh, Kevin Durant. KD. All KD. KD, KD is Jokic. ethical. Jokic oh, for sure see? ethical. Uh, this um, is crazy although I will say Jokic also has a bit of Moses Malone Jokic? in him where he will miss, he will miss shots on purpose. <laughs> Jokic the big, is, is a big so, fat flopper. Not totally ethical. He is not Big fat flopper. Just doing all this. Kyrie. Donovan Mitchell. All he does is throw the ball up on the ground. Paul George is ethical. Paul George is ethical. Like since when to get into the strike would be a bad thing because Luca, Luca gets to the strike. It's not just about getting to the line. It's about what is it? The ethics of it is if you get fouled legitimately on a shot. Right, that's fine. That's ethical. Luca fishes all the time, Mars. Luca is always I'm breaking down for like this. The unethical part is when you ain't even trying to make a shot. You just trying to get free throws. That's unethical. Yeah. James Harden, when he's hooking people and just going, unethical. Joel Embiid, jab. <laughs> Do it again. Unethical. That's unethical. <laughs> that unethical. But if you legitimately get hacked, there's nothing wrong with that. That's a legitimate foul. You deserve your free throws. But when you just going, unethical. Every so time, chill time. Unethical. You ever play ball, right? And with you playing ball, you always going up against a guy that is some. they just get into the lane just to get the foul? Yes. Like, not even trying to score. And it's not like the foul calls where I could tell you the type of hoop where, yeah, you get fouled, but, like, you're going to call a foul if it's, like, a hard foul, right? Right. They're the ones where it's like, nah, I'm waiting waiting for that ticky-tacky foul for you to hit me on my wrist, and I'm going to call it. And Yep, and you're going to be like, why the hell are you calling that, bro? It wasn't even that serious. Guys that you don't play through contact. Yeah, and it gets, you t- it gets you tight because, like, that's yeah. not ethical. Like, well, type of mo- well, me then. he's like, shut the hell up. You feel So that's that's unethical, chill. You want to start off even even, even, even low key on that? But I know you guys ain't ready to hear the whole. Yes, he was. Yes, he was. Yes, he was. I am so interested. Well, I'm actually ready to hear that. How is D Wade unethical? Because D the Wade, whole Wade finals, he was going to the so, line, the 27 he, pump fakes, and then jumping into people, the kicking yeah. your leg out and jump shots. Unethical. He, he was doing him that. And Kobe, him and Kobe started that. Kobe I was just about to say. Then is Brian unethical too? I was Kobe's say not as unethical as D Wade was, but Kobe okay, is not as unethical. Yeah, there's definitely every great scorer, every great scorer has unethical buckets for sure. But no, 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 but look, but look, it's the most unethical. Kobe standing there with the ball. No, even KD was doing that. Even at one point, no, 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 even KD was doing rip Yes, KD was doing rip throughs, but you know what makes him the real ethical champion? Why he's so ethical because he didn't need it to succeed. I feel like personally, if you took some of these tools away from some players, you will see a drastic change and a dramatic dip in their numbers and in their production. Some guys need this unethical way to be the scorers that they are. We're talking about just scores. But other guys like Kevin Durant, he showed you. You take the rip. I have to rip through. Matter of fact, I'll give you 40 without free throws. I'm ethical. That, you mean like you, you, you mean like when the whistle you mean like when the whistle started blowing less for James Harden and then that production ended up going the other way because the whistle started hey, blowing man. less for him. That's why he's that 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 was why he a hamstring cool. injury. James Harden. James Harden was still unethical, and he goal. still gets to the line now. I think James Harden leads the Clippers in free throw attempts per game. I want to be so James Harden yeah. just knows how to draw fouls. Like is is. Book ethical. Paul Pierce is ethical. Ethical. Oh my God, them early years. Oh. I'm not gonna lie. I think D Book oh is ethical because I'm not gonna lie. Devin Book is ethical. He don't. I don't. I don't see him foul baiting a lot. If they foul him, they really do foul him. Mm-hmm. Kawhi is top tier ethical. I don't know. 
Yes, Kawhi, Kawhi, Kawhi ain't looking, looking for brave ethics. Kawhi is at the point. No. He will play physical. Kawhi Leonard will play physical, and he will play through contact. But Kawhi isn't looking for fouls. He's looking to get to that mid-range spot in transition. He's dunking Carmelo the basketball. Carmelo was ethical. Carmelo was ethical. Carmelo, was <laughs> Carmelo, <laughs> and I, oh, Carmelo would match that physicality. Yeah, Carmelo was Yo, ethical. This ethical conversation. Is oh, Dame, unethical. Dame, unethical. Yes. I, Dame. Hey, Mark, I seen the chat. Oh, yeah. yeah. Dame, you Shout out to Big Gun Rich. Dame, unethical. Yeah. Dame, yeah. Dame, 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 Dame is unethical as well. Un He's un unethical. unethical buckets. We're going to stop the chain. We'll stop, it. We'll stop the chain. Lie. The playoff translation of the unethical bucket guys is Jamal Murray. Jamal Murray, ethical. Jamal Murray, ethical. Jamal yes. Murray, He's ethical. Super ethical. We already had this conversation, Dub. Can Dub? Can you name 10, 10 better tough shot makers in the game than Jamal Murray? Oh, no, 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 no. Can Jamal we even Murray's name five? Because he'd be making some crazy yeah, shots. His tough shot making is It's special. insane. It's right. But hold on. Tough shot making doesn't just make you unethical, though. Yes, it does. No, it makes no, you that's ethical. Not, that's, a part, that's, a, that's part of the ethics. Yeah, that's what, that's if you're yes, making tough is. shots, that's ethical. Hell yeah. Yes. You're not fishing for no, the foul. I, I, you I, you you avoiding the contacts to try to yes. get that shot off. That's ethical as hell. While James Harden well, just, would be like... Just because you make wrong. tough shots doesn't mean... Because James, all of these guys make tough shots. No, but shots. that doesn't just make you... Make no, we're not shots. saying it makes you ethical. Jamal Murray is ethical because he doesn't foul bait. When he does get to the line, it's legitimate fouls. He's not yeah. hunting for fouls on jump shots. He's playing basketball the right way. And when he does get fouled, it's legitimate fouls. And he's not crying for fouls that don't exist. He's not trying to jump forward 10 feet on jump shots to try sliding right. in someone's landing space. He's not doing sure. any of those things. It's ethical Rock. buckets of Jamal Murray. The top Rock, shot how many is times? Just, sure. Man. Absolutely. Absolutely, Mars. 100%. Ron, how many times have you how many times have you seen Jamal Murray? Because there's a difference between that's a tough shot and that's a foul. How many times have you said with Jamal Murray, that's a tough shot as opposed to that's a foul? That's a tough shot as opposed to that's a foul. Yes. Like a well, guy, he he, 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 he made it, he made a shot on a guy, and you said, damn, that's a tough shot. As opposed to he made a shot on the guy, you go, damn, that's a foul. And he didn't get called. It's been a couple times. I think it's Jamal more times than less. I for me, it's been more times than not that I said that's a tough shot. Then I Will said that's Chamberlain a foul. is unethical. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, Will Chamberlain is not unethical. I played it. Uh, no, no way. No well, matter of fact, I'm not I'm not gonna say it because I Hey, Living with the Will. fact that there was no I, offensive interference is unethical. I don't care. I, I yeah, haven't I seen know. it. I didn't see Will play, so I'm not going to sit there and Bro. say to make it unethical or ethical or not. I, I'm not going to do that. What I will say is, I just want to answer a couple of questions in chat. AI, ethical in my opinion. I think AI was ethical, personally. I don't think yeah, AI didn't foul, babe. AI, AI, AI was just getting AI was just getting hit. Little dude right. going there, literally getting hit yeah. and kept going. Give you that. That's why it's not just about free throw attempts. That's why it's not just about free throw attempts. Box office TV is called Spring Roll, my guy. That's what it is. Uh, I don't know if you got it in your area. But Yo, that's James B, I peeped it too. Uh, I swear rolls. he was about to say that too. And Spring Rolls with the peanut sauce. <laughs> I'm not going to say oh, that. I thought he was about to say that. I'm not going to say that. I played against Chamberlain. No, I didn't. I'm like, damn, Chai, know you was that old, no, man. No, I'm not that old. And by the way, James B, don't you start with me. You remember what happened the last time you got into it with me. Don't you start mm -hmm. with me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You remember what happened the last mm -hmm. time I saw you? Know, don't you start. Right, fellas, we, we, we got to get to these super chats, super. though. James B. <laughs> James B, save yourself today. All right. Was he, well, in the finals, in the finals, he was getting to the line OD. I'm not going to hold you. Nah, bro. I'm not sure. Duck, duck. I like Dirk. That? Dirk's a bit shaky Dirk, for me. Dirk, Dirk might be an unethical bucket get out. No, he's not unethical, but he's not in the You think he's on the line? You think he's on the line? He's not, not, the, he's not in the KD, Kawhi, ethical right. bucket committee. He's not unethical, but he's not with those guys. For me, he's not. Uh, so he's 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 the gatekeeper of ethics. He's the ethics gatekeeper. Yeah, he might he might be. He might <laughs> be. You, if you more if you more ethical than than Dirk, you in the ethical. You're you're pretty ethical. Oh, okay. so he's the Trey Young. He's a Trey Young. Yeah, man. Reggie Miller unethical. Chat, just understand. <laughs> I've never heard people talk about ethics in basketball. Until now, I just so today. come on, man. This was a very good topic. I appreciate on, the, the, the chat. Pass just because he's doing 30k doesn't mean he's ethical. I'm just saying, facts all Damn, 30s are the same. The hell is all right, fellas. CKF said Brunson should have been a starter. Unfortunately, the NBA media keeps talking about what he isn't instead of what he can be and what he's becoming. Casual fans see that and voted based on that. Interesting. But, Damo, do you believe that Jalen Brunson should be starting over Dame? Yes, I absolutely believe Jalen Brunson should be starting over Dame. Why not? Uh, I'm sick of the disrespect to Jalen Brunson. 
I'm, it, it's, it's nasty work for real. It, and it started, and honestly, it was innocent. It, it, it innocently started with, um, was it Becky Hammond? Right? Mm -hmm. The Becky mm -hmm. Hammond, and then it just spiraled out of control. I, I don't, mm -hmm. I don't get it. I don't know why. Ever since then, it seems like he took the challenge and wanted to prove people wrong. And until he's not playing with Julius Randle, uh, he's just going to have to keep getting dealt the, the shitty hand. Can I ask y'all this? Because I heard Charles Barkley saying this, and I, I want to hear y'all opinion about this, right? He's a cool bucket guy, but Kurt. A thousand percent. Well, not an unethical bucket getter. That's not nah. true. Keep but going. Still, I'm taking you to basketball. Carry on, Doug. Like, like, we don't have to argue. Hey, 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 keep keep going, dog. I'm not there. Carry on. Uh, um, so Charles Barkley said, um, and Kenny was giving him slack, but he said the Knicks signing Jalen Brunson was one of the best signings ever. And he made, and he brought up, Kenny brought up like Shaq and KD, like those signings were better. And Charles Barkley's point was, no, it's like those guys were already like greats. Those guys were already set. There were guys in the league. He's talking about this signing in a way where Jalen Brunson, they signed him, and now his, his contract is now looking cheaper than what it should be because he's turning out to be this great player right now. So I just want to hear y'all thoughts on that. Like, is is this signing from Jalen Brunson one of the best signings? Like, Think ever? about this for a second, Dub. So you got a starting point guard in the playoffs, mm -hmm. right? moves to a different team, that hasn't been very good, and you get him on the cheap. And when I say on the cheap, I mean they basically the contract they got him on is less than Jordan Poole's contract. That's where they have him. And they got him under contract for two more years on this current deal. Mm -hmm. They basically stole him. Nobody was talking about Jalen, nobody was talking about Jalen Brunson with this. Nobody was talking about him, and nobody was talking about Julius Randle. It wasn't a big deal when they ended up getting Jalen Brunson. They got him for at 100 million and there were some people who thought that the Knicks overpaid for him there were some people who mm -hmm. thought that the Knicks actually overpaid right. for him this contract is looking really good right now and they're gonna have to pay after this is up and I, again got two more years on this deal they stole him let me tell you why Doug. <clears throat> let me tell you why it's not a big deal hmm. it's a big deal it's a big deal but like when they're billionaires you're just getting a discount for a billionaire <laughs> it don't really matter on a, on account. You know what I'm saying? It's like it don't really matter. They could have paid more, because it don't really matter. They're not gonna win nothing. You can't win. You can't win nothing with the six with the six one point guard being your best player. <laughs> Becky Hammond taught me that. So it don't really matter. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah, it's cool. But if if it was if they were gonna win the championship, then it'd be something. But it, all it is is billionaires getting a discount. It's really messed up. They should have paid that young man. He I'm not gonna lie. I, he I was gonna speak on that too. Next season, so I mean, he's gonna he's gonna I mean, opt out. He, of his player obviously, he's gonna opt out unless he's really. So a only, player. They only really have him for one more this year and next. Y'all y'all are y'all so are crazy. Y'all are crazy. The black man ball getting ball ball robbed. Yeah, That's so what y'all. I can't believe y'all. I'm not. Y'all y'all cap y'all cap the billion y'all cap the billionaires right now. Y'all no one's cap the billionaires. Y'all praise him. Y'all praise him. How we doing that? How we doing that? Y'all, 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 didn't at see this, time, but I did say it was a at the time of him Captain, being a free yeah, agent. Captain, no one thought he was a max level, max contract level. Nobody, point guard. no nobody one thought that he didn't even think that, which is why he saw. Well, I don't know what he thought. Let me not say he didn't think that, but he knew if he wanted to prove that, he had home. to prove that. I'm, I'm yeah. not this was I'm not gonna think for him, but he he signed that contract knowing he could prove it. I, I'm pretty sure yeah. everybody in the NBA feels they're a max level guy or whatever it is when they go into free agency and have a good year. That's fine. But he knew I'm going to sign this and prove what I'm worth. Same way Grant did when he went to Detroit. I'm going to sign this to show y'all I'm worth the money I'm asked for, whatever it is. He proved them wrong. They took a get if, if the narrative is y'all overpaid for this man when no one was asking for him. Now, obviously, some team might have been interested, but he wasn't a hot commodity. And when he signed, majority, unless you were really tapped into the Mavs, majority of people said that's either a, a good contract for him, good job for you, you got paid, you got your money, cool. Or they said, dang, they severely overpaid for a guy that's almost a starting point guard, a guy that's going to have to be a backup point guard, whatever the narratives were. Everyone thought that. After year one, immediately, oh, he's underpaid now. He's underpaid. No one is applauding the fact that a brother's being underpaid. I'm applauding the fact that they thought you were worth one thing. You signed and approved to them. You're worth double. You showed them what your worth is, which is way more than anyone thought, including your agent. 
Because if your agent thought you was worth max money, they wouldn't have told you to sign that contract. You would have fought a little harder. They would have fought a little harder to get you some more dollars. Right. Fellas, uh, we do have to move on. I got a gang of super chats, and we still got to talk about the Western Conference NBA All Star starters. But I got some cash chats from Cash Chat that I need to read. Uh, the first one is from Jordan Taylor. Uh, he said, Mars, how do the Rockets coaching staff help Jalen Green this offseason? Um, I think he has to help himself. Nah, if I'm honest, I think he has to help himself. Um, <laughs> whatever, uh, um, if he really is that like, struggling mentally, you get him the resources he needs for that. Absolutely, that's how they can help him there. But in terms of on court production, he has to help himself, he has to be stronger, he has to be in the weight room, he has to be put, in, he has to be getting stronger, he has to fill out his frame sooner rather than later. Um, he has to work on being able to play through contact. And he has to shoot the basketball better, not just like field goals. I'm talking about jump shots. He has to shoot the basketball better. If he wants to be an elite level scorer in the NBA, he has to be in the lab working on that jump shot consistently. Um, it feels like sometimes the mechanics are all over the place. He doesn't have a consistent shot that he can get to. Like those are things he has to work on himself. And I think maybe maybe social media tricked me. It seemed like he was working in this offseason. And I do believe he was working in this offseason. I think he just has to continue doing that. Trust the work he's putting in. Um, and I think it comes from a mental space, and that's why they can help him. But in terms of on-court production, he has to help himself and make sure he trusts the work he puts in, make the right decisions. And the coaching staff can help him in terms of getting smarter and understanding the game, which he has a long way to go in terms of that, just understanding mismatches, knowing when to attack, blah, blah, blah. They can help him with that in film. But in terms of his overall basketball skill set, he has to help himself. Um, I think that was the thing that you just brought up, Mars. And I was gonna, that was, I was gonna expand on your point right there. More than anything, the film doesn't lie. So for me to sit down and actually watch myself on tape, where am I getting shots? Where am I the most effective? Where am I the best? And where am I the worst? I can only, I can't just do that, or I can't know that if I'm just out on the floor. When I'm watching film and I see that I'm the most effective in this area, I'm the most effective over here, just offensively, defensively. Where am I lacking? Where is the energy? Where is it not coming from? Well, where am I the most? When I'm watching film, that's when I can find out where I'm at my best and I can know what to work on. I just It's not that I'm just shooting and, okay, my shot's bad. Well, why is my shot bad? Once I see myself on tape, and a lot of people don't like to watch tape. I was one of those people who hated watching tape, but I would watch it anyway because at, how, how else am I going to get better? I think the film room for him is, more, is, 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 is the most important because I think him getting in the gym and working – I think the film room is going to come from, I think him getting in the gym and working, the film room is going to come from where he doesn't know where he is, where he can get better. Yeah, so definitely film work, which I, I'm sure, I trust that the All-Star break is going to be a key time because I don't think any of Houston's players are going to the All-Star break. I'll be surprised. Maybe like the young players like Amen Thompson and like the Rising Stars or whatever they do. Mm -hmm. But like any of the core guys, I don't think Sangoon's not going to make it, I don't think, and no one else has a chance. So... I think we're going to have our full team. I wouldn't be surprised if that time is where we really get a lot of work in. Um, I do think, though, it's not even just from a scoring standpoint. Like, that was a play. He played well against Portland. It was probably one of his better games of the season. There was a play where Sengun got a mismatch with Anthony Simons on him in the post. Sengun is calling for the ball. The whole world knows Sengun should get the ball in that moment. Give him the best. Jalen Green says, nah, let me go ISO. Meanwhile, Sangoon's there waiting for the ball in the low block. Sangoon's there for so long, he ends up getting a three in the key offensively, turnover. It's those plays there where Jalen Green needs to understand time and score, who has the advantage, what he needs to do on the court. Because Sangoon's a willing passer. If you give it to Sangoon in the post, they're going to double, you might get an open shot. But he is those times he doesn't understand the flow of the game and those type of things that I think Ime is going to help him with over the all-star break, over the course of the offseason. And I think it'll be better because I think if you doubt his talent, I think you're hating, but now he just has to be able to unlock it and get to it more consistently, and then the smarts will come later on. But I say it all the time, he's only 21. Like, there's no need to give up on someone Let's who isn't even 22 yet. Let's chill out. Yeah, he's okay. only 20. I, I chill out. Typically during the All Star break, what are teams doing? Are they in the lab together? Are they watching film together? Are they together doing work? Or are they on break? Like, do they give the guys that time to go do their thing or what? Tristan Thompson was in Cancun. 
Yeah, okay. Tristan yeah, but he's not serious. He's not serious. He's not serious. I ain't talking about him like this year, but I'm talking about like yeah, what, what, do you, what do you typically what do you typically do? Like what is that is that what t- teams like the majority of teams around the league that give the guys a week off or yeah, like so the, family that, time? That, that last that last game is on Tuesday and we don't play again until next like let's say they don't play again until next Wednesday. All right, so I gotta be back by Monday of next week. I gotta be okay. I got a couple of days off, so I gotta be back by Monday of next week. And that's what I'm I, don't doing. Think you, I don't think we're going to do that. No, that's just maybe that's the optimist. I don't think we're going to do right. that. I think, I think we're going to be right. together for the. All-Star that's going to see that's that right there. That right there, Mars. That's going to take a guy like that. Shouldn't have to come from Emma though. I don't. I don't think that should come from. I think it will come from Fred. Come from come from Fred and Jeff Green. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. this guy's got to come from them. Like yo, young fellas, we we're not doing that this year. <laughs> so let's, yeah, let's get mean, we had two years maybe, of no accountability. You can miss the All Star break one time. Uh, and it doesn't, you know what though? It doesn't. Now I don't want to get too off track, but it doesn't have to be in Houston. You know what I'm saying? They could all go yeah. somewhere. You know what I'm saying? You know, it could be a vacation, but it's a team. Bring, it should bring your family, family vacation, and we all together. Well, that's. I think that would that would be a good vet move. You know what I'm saying? From from Fred Van Fleet, who just got that crazy contract. And now we Fellas, are here. Um, I have a lot of super chats, and Jamaica's choice it. just said, "Ron, read the super chat." Then before me, shot you two box. <laughs> hey, hey, Ron, I don't want to get shot. Ron, you do not want them Jamaicans after your ass. I do you don't, not Ron. want to get a cap in my ass. No, right. you, do not want them, you do not want them Jamaicans. At, let's go. Matter of fact, let's go. Matter of fact, bullet hole. On. You know. Matter of fact, come like, on, let's like, go. You don't want them Jamaicans on your ass. No, you don't. Yeah, you see what I'm saying? Like I all want the shotters. Mm-hmm. So can mm-hmm. can you guys help me to help them to not aim guns in my? So direction? read the super chats, then Ron, so they don't come get you. <laughs> cool, cool. Almighty Lambo. Um. Sent through a cash chat though and said, uh, Knicks fans can take over Barclays but can't vote. Yeah, exactly. It, it's on Knicks fans, they should have voted. Like, mm-hmm. I, and I, I, there is a super chat coming up, so I'm gonna wait to address it. But there is a super chat coming up that is about Knicks fans defending themselves. Like, We're not gonna get to it, Morris. We're not uh, get to it. Also, also, um, I do want to say, uh, I, I, I gotta ask why AMS and Almighty Lambo. You guys are free now and you hit the streets and whatnot. But I do want to ask a question about when you guys were in prison. Um, who had the top bunk and who had the bottom bunk? Mind your business. I'm just I'm I'm just curious to know. I don't know. I just I just want to know who I just want to know. I don't know. What's that? Type of questions you ask you, bro. You guys you guys settle that in the chat. What's going on right now? Anyways, buttered biscuit said of course we go into the conference. Of course we go into the conference champs. That's a given. If we don't, I'll delete my page. Other than Boston, who can beat us? The Bucks, they got Doc Rivers laughing emojis. Miami, Sixers, all frauds, bro. You already said he's a Heat fan, so I guess, yeah. Tito El Bandito said, Mars, when did you find out Jake Kidd wasn't a white man? Hmm. I never thought he was white. Like, maybe, I don't, I don't know. There was no part of me that thought Jason Kidd was white. That was mustard. That's called him a white Ricky Rubio. Yeah, I, I, I must have did never, not call Jason Kidd white Ricky Rubio. No, he didn't. Oh, light skin Ricky Rubio, light skin Ricky Rubio, light skin Ricky Rubio. Oh, light skin Rubio. Rubio. My bad. My bad. But I, I, there was no. I never thought Jason Kidd was white. Like I just, I never. Thought. <clears throat> yeah, well, he so did call him a light skin Ricky Rubio. Though. I'm talking about beds, um, but still, my own business. <laughs> uh, still, yes, of course. This super chat moved to the top of the list. From uh, the great Jamaica's choice, <laughs> the best nation in the world. <laughs> um, he said, which one would win? The 2014 Eastern All-Stars or the 2024 Eastern All-Stars and the 2004 Western All-Stars or the 2024 Western All-Stars? 2004 East All-Stars. I'll have to pull all the teams up to see. Like, right. Four, so what, four, four, 14? Um, so, uh, two, 2004, the Western Conference. Steve Francis, Kobe Bryant, KG, Tim Duncan, Yao Ming versus this year's West, Shea, Luca, LeBron, KD, Jokic. I'm taking 2004 Western Conference team. Easy. Mm-hmm. Interesting. And then and the, the 2004 East. 2004 East, T Mac, AI, Vince Carter, yep. Jermaine O'Neal, and Ben Wallace. 
versus Tyrese Halliburton, Damian Lillard, Giannis Embiid, and Jason Tatum. Yo, you know what they would do to them? You know what that 2014 would do to that 2024 Yeah, they would lose to them. It'll get disrespectful. <laughs> It'll get disrespectful. The West won that game by four points. All right, keeping it lit, y'all. Funny man said, if the All-Star starters played in a seven-game series, who do you guys think is winning? Let me go ahead and throw this on the screen right now so we can see mm -hmm. both teams stacked up against each other. This is the Eastern Conference, and this is the Western Conference. Eastern Conference, Giannis, Embiid, Tatum, Halliburton, and Lillard versus LeBron, KD, Jokic, Luka, and SGA. Who's winning the seven-game series? Is the series in the finals or in round one? <laughs> Because if it's round one, you know what Damian Lillard is going to be doing. We already, yeah, we, so we, not, we, not, we, not determined. Are we going to get Dame averaging 50 or Dame averaging five? Mm -hmm. we, we know what that is. I like that Western Conference team, though. I go, I go the West. I go the West. Yeah, I like that Western Conference team. Yeah, I'm taking the West. Mm -hmm. I, I like that Western East Conference team. I don't, I don't know where the West is. I go the West. Hey, Ron, take off your – Oh my God, I'm going to choke Ron out. I swear to God, I am Ron. Take off your bias, <laughs> Halliburton. Oh my God, I'm sick of this dude with this Halliburton. Hey, bro, you go. <laughs> Hold on, time out, time out, time out, time out. Oh so not God. only am I running around trying not to get shot by Jamaican AKs and, <laughs> and the Jamaican Mafia, but now I'm ducking, <laughs> <laughs> ducking getting choked out from Chill Town. This is insane, <laughs> yo. <laughs> On top of that, my baby mama driving loose through the streets trying to run me over in Almighty's Lambo. <laughs> like, oh, it's crazy God. out here. All right. Oh, bro. No way. Yo, she... chill. <laughs> That's not that crazy to say that the Eastern Conference. <laughs> by a mile, though, Ron? You say that they yes. smoked them? Yeah, this, and this... I'm going to tell you why. Please enlighten me. I'm going to tell you why. Because Giannis and Embiid are going to just dominate the key. Severely dominate the, the paint. Let me see the key. Let me, I'm sorry, not the key. Let me see Jokic, the key. KD, LeBron. That front court is looking tricky with, with Jokic, KD, and LeBron. Okay, so James is going to have to rebound. KD is going to have to rebound. Joker cleans glass, as we know. He league leader in rebounds. Giannis, on the other hand, going to play – it's going to be tough in the paint. Okay, I can give you that. And Joel Embiid – Joel Embiid don't really want to play down there, but he will play down. That's he's going to play down there if KD's guarding him or yeah. if uh, – I don't know. Or, Last or time Ron I seen KD play the center, he looked like the greatest player of all time. I ain't going <laughs> to lie to but, 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 Ron, you can, say, you can say the same thing for the guards in the East, though. Like, Luka, Luka and Shea going to kill Damon. Um, Damon Frying Tyler. them. They're getting Frying everything – Everything they want. You lucky LeBron's starting and not Kawhi, because then if Kawhi's starting, I promise it's a five game series. Promise, like Pinky promises a five game series. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh yeah, and then also oh, too, open. Jason Tatum will be dominating in the key as well. I touched nah, the stone. Okay, yeah. okay, yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> CKF said, "Bro, let's not be obtuse. 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 Knicks fans vote." The 29 other teams, the 29 other teams fans and casual base don't. You think Dame and Halley's votes were strictly Milwaukee and Indiana fans? Question mark. Please, LOL. Jalen Brunson barely got over a million fan votes. Barely. In a state of New York that has about 20 million people. If 10% of New York did their job and voted for Jalen Brunson, he would have made it. 10%. So I'm not saying the whole of New York has to do their job. If 10% of New York right. did that job, he would have been the second leading vote getter in the East. Second. Big, from big ox, you do look know that. You, look, at what, look at what you're asking And that's, for, and that's you, just you, from you, New York. You, that's you, not from the rest of the country. But that's you, just you're from saying, New you're York. You're saying 10%, like 10% of the people are even care about the All-Star game. Like, big ox. How would they all? all right, even if, if they the don't. Like just, it, that's just from New York. No. If 10% of just New York, I'm, I, maybe maybe 10% of New York doesn't care about the All-Star game. Maybe they don't. But if 10% of just New York did, he would have made it. He would have easily made it. And that's what's New York. The whole country has, what, 360 million people? If New York did their job, the rest of the country would barely have to do anything. Jalen Brunson barely getting over a million votes isn't because New York did their job and no one else did. New York also didn't do their job. New York didn't vote their players in well enough. Uh, and, you under the, and you under the impression, Big Ox, that the, the Knicks fans is only in New York City. It's Knicks fans in Buffalo. It's Knicks fans in Schenectady. It's Nick fans in upstate New York. It's Nick fans in Troy. It's Nick fans yeah, all over 10, the place in New York. Ten percent, ten percent of the people, like a lot of people, don't care about basketball. There's a lot of people that do, but it's not ten percent of the population. Like, 
Yeah, that's fine. That's why I said it would have to be ten percent. Ten percent of the ten percent of the ten percent of the people. Ten percent of the people. Ten percent of the people. Again, that's not what he's saying. And that's just for him to be second in family. No, that's not what he said. All Jalen Brunson needed. All Jalen Brunson needed to do to get into the All Star game based on fan vote is not come fifth. If Jalen Brunson were to come fourth in fan voting, he would have been in ahead of Damian Lillard. And all he needed to come fourth in fan voting was 50,000 more votes. They didn't do their job. They didn't do their job. If he came fourth in fan voting, he would have been ahead of Damian Lillard and they would have made it. I'm just saying what they would have needed to get him second in fan voting. Even if he came fourth, he would have made the All-Star game as a starter. And all they needed was 50K more votes to beat out Tyrese Maxey. Is that me asking too much for him to be out Tyrese Maxey? You get paid for to be an All-Star game? Yes. I don't, know I don't know if there's a bonus between starting and on the bench, but if Knicks, if New York as a whole and Knicks fans did their job and got him <laughs> fifty thousand more votes, he would have made it. Knicks fans, that's he would have made y'all it. failed, and that's why you are the second best fan base in your state. Yeah, but even but even Carl Bridges like, got three hundred thousand votes. So, just like <laughs> just like Chilltown said, though, there's there's fans in other places. There's other there's people that are fans of other teams that live in New York too though. I don't want I don't, you know what I'm saying. I th- I think what what Jalen Brunson got is they like, could have okay. they could have found forty thousand votes. They could have found. 50, are you saying they should? Are you saying they should have cheated? <laughs> mail in votes. They should have done that. Are you, are you talking? Are you talking about mail in <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying they should have done that. There was days where the votes were three. There were days where the votes were three. And I guarantee you, no, just now, just now, Mars, 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 talking about rigging the rigging the voting box. No, we ain't ripping the polls. He's talking about mail in ballots. No, we ain't doing that. He's talking about he's talking about what what Florida about to do in a couple months. Y'all know it's election year. We ain't talking about that. You talking about we ain't talking about rigging the votes now. All right, y'all, we got to keep it pushing. Trick Shots Only said, if Russell Westbrook wins a ring this year as a six-man off the bench, where does that put him amongst PGs on the all-time list? P.S. Shout out, Chilltown. That's my dog. Love from the six. Damo. Damo. <laughs> if you don't got nothing nice to say. You know. Yo, <laughs> nah, this I is about to get nasty. That's, I guess that's nah, we're not finna do this. I mean, if, if you want to be nice technical, nice. he's not the sixth man. It's Norman Powell, technically. But seventh mm. man of the bench. I mean, it doesn't doesn't. Move he's a rotation guy. Yeah, it does. It does. It doesn't. It doesn't move the needle for me. I, I mean, he's not going up. I would Nothing just ask any anybody who does feel like a sixth, seventh, eighth man, Russell Westbrook rings. Puts him in any higher in all time categories. I would ask you, did Dwight Howard move anywhere when he won a ring with the Lakers? And if he didn't, you're a hypocrite. Well, it depends. Did, what did you Gary, have did right Gary now? Payton move for any of you guys when he won in Miami? Not you're at 16, all. though. Not at all. But what, I mean, where do you have Dame right now? What, is, 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 he top, is he top seven point guards all time for you already? He didn't get 15. That's his. Russ is a top 10 point guard. Damo, he, Damo, he's not he's not for me. I don't even know if I got Russ top 10, honestly. Oh, yeah, so. he top Wait, 10. you was asking Dame or, about Dame or Russ? Russ. I'm talking about Russ. Oh, okay, you said Dame one. Yeah, Dame's lower than oh, Russ. I said Dame. Right? My bad, yeah, my bad. Said, I said, I meant to say, my me bad, y'all. I meant to say Russ. I meant to say Russ. Um, <laughs> is Russ top been... seven all time for me? Oh, seven? Mm. He might be I, six, I have a hard time making him top Russ probably somewhere around 15. He's in my, let me say this. I will have a hard time saying he's not in my top 10. Now, whether he's at the top of, like, if, whether he's closer to six or closer to 10, I will have to actually go and make a list. But I can't think of 10 point guards I would have higher all the time than Russell Westbrook. Being super probably got, and not trying to be nasty. I probably got Russ one step ahead of Andre Miller. Yo, Russ. Hey, Russ. I wish I was thinking like that. You got hey, Russ, Russ behind. You got Russ behind Rajon Rondo, right? Russ, oh, go ahead and get that ring so yeah. we can start having these J Kid conversations with you. Go ahead, brother. I believe. <laughs> I'm gonna fight. Bro, I'm gonna you, I'm gonna, me, me and Ox gonna. We, me and Ox gonna have to box, yo. Russ yeah, is for yeah, sure. Yeah, Russ yeah. is for sure. Now, first now, first of all, first of all, chill. I don't want to do that. Second of all, <laughs> second of all, I think. <laughs> I think Russ is closer to Andre Miller yeah, than Jason Kidd. That's why we're gonna have to box, yo. Me and Russ gonna I mean me and me and Ox. I mean, oh yeah, yeah, chill. Worry, worry about boxing Ox instead of putting me in the headlock. You, well, you, you <laughs> take care of him. He, he yeah, tripped. Too much to box. Uh, bro, 
I, I want I want to say give me Grievous Vasquez, but I ain't no hater like that. Uh, Yersta said Damo. Crazy, the reason might, the Mavs I want J Kid replaced is the same reasons as you want him gone, though not as bad. Uh, chill. I'm saying they had a role for him. Injuries changed it. Then they couldn't figure out what to do with him. Which is why he was complaining about what was going on there. Jason Kidd's hands me in his pockets? I ain't even noticed. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Dom, right, so, that, that, that just looks like a clueless like look right there. Like when you you just standing there, it's like so, hanging on Dom. It's so hard. It just it looks, looks so changing. clueless. You know what's crazy? <laughs> I hate the fact because I looked around the league. A lot of coaches do that. I hate that Darvin Ham happens to coach the Lakers, and I hate that I'm a part of the toxic Laker fan base. It's just in my blood. <laughs> I have to be, but I'm sorry. The cluelessness that it looks when it your looks team – it's not even, We can be up 20, put your hands in your pockets. I don't care. It's the cluelessness of when we are blowing a 15-point lead and then they pants off. You see steps in the three and they're down three. Cuts right to Darvin Ham. He's just – Hands is fine. Now I want to blame you. Like now, this looks like it's doing something. Yo, yo, Dabo, you got to admire the composure, though. The composure is flawless. You're too composed. Get composed. Mads because he's chilling is crazy. You can't be chilling when we're losing leads or they're they're running up twenty on us. Oh, and Shay puts him up twenty. Cut straight to the coach. Hands in his pockets. It looks the optics. It's, 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 a, it's a lack. It's not. It's it's a lack of self awareness. Like when like when I was you know like when you were young, and you might get you might get scolded or you know you know a quick a quick talking to your mom would be like get that dumbass look off your face, and you'd be like well I'm not I don't think <laughs> I'm, no, I'm, I'm like face. I'm like I don't think I don't think I'm looking dumb. This is my face, but you really just sitting there. It's like a lack of self awareness, bro. Like <laughs> oh, come on, man. You know how dumb you, you look right now. Yeah, snap out of it, bro. What are you? You know doing? how dumb you look right now. You look wild as oh, hell right just, now. Or, or just the concept of look busy. Look like you're doing work. Y'all ever been in school? <laughs> Me, I was low key. I, I was a little smarter, so I would finish my work early in class. And so I would be, so be over there just I looking like this at least. Just, just at hey, least pull out a notebook. Like at, least, at least look like you're doing work. You can't sit there and just be doing nothing. You look unproductive. Don't look unproductive, especially on the court. I don't care who. Uh, the water boy yeah. need to look productive. The towel boy need to look productive. The mop guy need to look productive. Everybody need to look productive in here. You can't Do be something. looking unproductive. Yo, Darvin Ham, yeah. take notes and make it look like you're taking notes, all right? Uh, MP13, <laughs> fellas, we're going to speed read through the rest of these Super Chats. Got a gang of them, but I want to get a people their money's worth. MP13 said, let me correct him. Knicks fans have been active as far back as I can remember. There's still Marbury jerseys in the streets. NYC is a Knicks city. Uh, debatable. And he said, uh, and who, <laughs> we, we don't whoever just lied about us. All right. Um, keeping it lit. Nick Tri-State said, Bron has never had good fundamentals. They got significantly worse as he's gotten older. Every time he do that spin move while driving left, travel. Fundamentally the worst out of the top 10 all time. That is crazy. Mm. Uh, mm. <laughs> it, dep- it so depends this- on who your top 10 is. It depends on who your top I'm about to say, right. you must not have no Jim Crow era basketball players. In yeah, I was going to say, if you have like Bill Russell in the top 10, that's right there. Then it makes sense. Yeah. It's fundamentals of why. So, wow. That's nuts to me. <laughs> Uh, everybody <laughs> unleashed said also my second question Udonis Haslam said yesterday that he doesn't have faith in the T-Wolves because he said that their half court offense is sus also said Gobert becomes a liability in the playoffs thoughts he was quick, cooking. Thoughts, quick thoughts he was cooking he's actually better on the perimeter I'm talking about offensively he's a liability defensively I don't think offensively he's sure yeah. uh, offensively I mean I I mean, I think that goes without saying, but defensively, he's been a lot better on the perimeter. And I, I do uneth- like that about him. Most unethical French guy I know in the league. Okay, so you called him Bismack. I don't, anything, any, anytime we talk about Rudy Gobert with you, I don't anything that you say. Get me You already know, man. Not, not, even, not even listening. I'm, I'm not. Whenever you say anything about Rudy Gobert, go on one end out the other. I'm not trying but to get me on baby. Mind. I'm good. Mm-hmm. Almighty Lambo said, thanks for the bail, Chill Town, but I'm a natural hater, and I'm prepping you up for this 49ers slander from for this 49ers slander. Me and a few others finna let let off after this weekend. All right, do that. Mm-hmm. Do that. Clad Diamond said, Fox 
is the most overrated defender. Facts. I haven't heard too many people praise his defense until today, to be honest. So I don't know how that makes him overrated. What, what kind of what kind of defender do you think we think he is? I think he yeah. defended coming out of college, but I don't think he's an all league defender or anything like that. I don't know what are we talking about? We talk about Donovan. Talk about. Uh, he'll get, he'll get one in the next three seasons. Chill time, watch. He'll get he'll get on one uh, our defensive team next three seasons. DSG Piccolo said, "I forgot to say yesterday, but Aiden looked good against the Rockets. If only that level of effort was consistent." He didn't, man. Our team can't rebounds. That doesn't mean that he looked okay. He got some rebounds. Good for him. He a bum. Bum. Sage sent through a super chat and said 151 players who have attempted 25 plus field goal attempts to tie or take the lead in the final 24 seconds of the fourth quarter, playoffs included. Jason Tatum ranks first out of 151 with 51.9 field goal percentage. Hmm. Mm. And that's why nice. the Eastern Conference starters <clears throat> will beat the Western Conference starters because Jokic and Giannis will carry them to for the first three and a half quarters, and then Jason Tatum would take over. And Halliburton will lead the game in assists. Mm -hmm. Of course. And Damon three-pointers made, too. Steph wasn't on the list. Steph wasn't on the list. Respect. Yeah, but it's also time. not a first-round series, so. Mm, okay. Got you. Uh, From the top, Naruto Uchihi? Uchiha? Uchiha. 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 Said, I'm late, but just so you know, Giannis finished second in overall player votes, 196. First in overall media votes, 100. And first in overall fan votes, 5.4 million. I thought it was James. No, nah, LeBron was LeBron was um, second for the players and the media. He was first in fan votes, but first in that's fan votes. For the best. That's what I was thinking about. Yeah, but Giannis like cleared in the East in terms of mm -hmm. fan votes. You might say, I thought Giannis uh, led all fan votes for NBA players. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Almighty Lambo with the super chat said, I ain't sleep because I'm built different, but we saw pirate in the yard though. Mm. Free pirate till it's backward, by the way. Free. And if you guys got any money that you want me to put on his books, cash chat, uh, ca cash at me right now. Right, not okay. not the player's choice, cash app, cash chat me. Hey, Mars, real quick I before we it. go, what you think about uh Liverpool's manager bouncing? It's about damn time, man. It's about damn time, man. Maybe my team could be competitive now, man. It's about damn time. Yeah. All right, y'all. Uh, appreciate everybody for tapping in. If you haven't, visit www.playerschoicemerch.com and like the video on the way out. Subscribe. We will catch y'all on Monday. Peace Later. out, chat. Later. Tune into the Twitch stream. I'm out the stream. Tune in on Twitch. Yes, sir. And open Later. gym. Later. And tune in open gym. There we go. Thank you. Later, Later fellas. Out. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I just, just had you two up.